without a doubt, we have the makings of a record crowd for a NASCAR Busch Series event here at Dover Downs International Speedway. The competition is hot. Temperatures are climbing. The MBNA Platinum 200, the 15th race of the year for the NASCAR Busch Series, is set to unfold right here on TNN Motorsports. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Dover, Delaware. I'm Eli Gold. Great to have you alongside today. This is always an unpredictable race when you come to the Monster Mile. 30 times the NASCAR Busch Series has run here. We've had 23 different winners. We've seen drivers spin and win, kind of like Dale Earnhardt Jr. did a year ago. We're also seeing Dover debuts for a number of drivers today. Tony Roper for the first time, Tony Raines, and from the Bush North and Modified Tour, Ted Christopher on hand, all making their Dover debuts. Buddy Baker is with us here today, and Buddy, something else you need to inject into the equation. It's June, starting to warm up. Well, it is that, and a lot of people are fixing wrecks from races they've already had this year. Also, they're looking at a racetrack that is so fast. Let me talk to you a second about how fast. Imagine going one mile and making four corners in 22 seconds. That's how fast they are here. Right now, we're about 23 miles an hour faster at Dover than the speed with which Buddy Baker won the pole some 20 years ago. There are the Winston Cup drivers who are in the field today making the afternoon's jump over the NASCAR Busch Series. But just because you're in the field doesn't guarantee you a victory. Darrell Waltrip, the last 12 times we've run here in the Busch Series, only once has a Winston Cup driver gotten the win. Hmm, that makes me wonder where Mark Martin and Jeff Burton have been. Uh, maybe they don't run here that much. You know, the thing that I'm hearing a lot from the fans particularly, not so much in the garage because I think the bush drivers are smart enough, no better to complain, but the fans are getting unhappy with Winston Cup drivers winning all these bush races. Quite frankly, I think they're going to have to come up with some sort of solution. I'd like to see them make a rule if you're in the top 25 in Winston Cup points, you can't run a bush race. I think that'd be fair. But for today, there are a number of Winston Cup regulars in the field, and we're set to fire the engine. So why don't we go trackside right now? Dave Elgina, the Senior Executive Vice President and Director of Motorsports for MBNA, has the command we've been waiting for. Gentlemen, start your engines. Sports is live at the Monster Mile. We're coming right back for the green flag. Don't you go away. Great, great, great. Keep digging on the outside, but you're doing a good job. Yellow, tell the yellow. Watch your back door. TNN Motorsports live coverage of the MBNA Platinum 200 is being brought to you by the more than 2,500 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. your coffee DW or was it? Hello there, good buddy. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Check, 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 check. You got it. Thanks. Uh, all righty. That's tomorrow, so it's got to be this side. I got you down. You got your notebook, Emmy. I got you down there, buddy. Man. Wait a minute. Thorough. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It ain't been my worst race right. No. It just ain't been my best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ah, boy.
CNN Motorsports live coverage of the MBNA Platinum 200 is being brought to you by the more than 2,500 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by smooth Bush beer and easy drink in Bush Light. Bush, the official sponsor of the NASCAR Bush Series. There's a great look at the Monster Mile, the Super Speedway, which is around the outside of that gray oval in the middle, which is the horse racing track. That has also been the staple of entertainment here in Dover. There's the AutoZone race analysis, brought to you by the more than 2,500 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts, and yes, indeed, Dover has been the site of 12 first-time wins in NASCAR Bush Series competition. You wouldn't think so because it's a tough old racetrack, but indeed, those are the numbers. Let's check out the starting grade with the seventh career pole for Dick Trickle. Second Bristol start for Kevin Grubb. Ninth start for Stanton Barrett this year. And Kenny Irwin around the Bush Series in Texas. David Green, the 1994 Bush Series champion. Two Bush wins here for Michael Waltrip. One victory here for Joe Bessie. And Kenny Wallace, who's having a great weekend, has qualified well for the Winston Cup race tomorrow. There's Mike Dillon, veteran Johnny Benson, Shane Hall, and buddy, Mike McLaughlin is always a guy you've got to be watchful of when you come here to the Monster Mile. Yeah, he has the temperament uh, when he gets on the racetrack not to get himself in trouble and keep the fenders pretty straight on that race car. So I think he's a factor any time he's on the race. There you see rows seven and eight. Row number nine has Todd Bodine with three wins and 13 starts here. That's a pretty good average. Yeah, he seems like he must like this racetrack. Uh, of course, close to home. I think that has a lot to do with it. think so, huh? Yeah, I yeah. think so. <laughs> but I don't know what else could it be. The world, according to D.W. Yeah, Darrell Waltrip. There's Ernie Irvin going racing in the Federated entry here this weekend. First time for Tony Roper. Texas Terry always tough when he comes visiting to the NASCAR Bush Series. There's Ted Christopher. Never ran here. I thought he had thought about coming here when the Bush North Tour was in town a year ago. Just never did show. Yeah, and you know, he's so good in the modified, but uh, also you saw uh, uh, Ward Burton also in the lineup today. This is one of the five races he's going to run this year in that particular car. There you see Adam Petty. Chuck Bowne had a fine run in Charlotte a weekend ago. Then Buckshot Jones, Bobby Hillen, sponsorless, basically. And Steve Grissom, having taken over the Jimmy Kitchens ride just a couple of weeks ago. We've got Ernie Irvin carrying cameras for you today. There he is in 24th spot. And Ernie will give us the ride around. Matt Kenseth, Ian Dale Earnhardt Jr. will be trying to come to the front for 14th and 15th starting spots, respectively. 12th place for Mike McLaughlin. We talked to him. Shane Hall likes this racetrack. He starts in 11. And Herman the German, Kenny Wallace, <laughs> he'll give us a ride around the high banks. Dover Downs International Speedway. A number of teams failed to qualify. The coach was here. Jerry Glanville didn't make it. Lyndon Amick, Hermie. Sorry to see Andy Santer was trying to come back after that accident at Daytona and just couldn't get the speed up. Yeah, he went down to Greenville and tested this past week. I talked to him a little bit there, and he said he was feeling good, and he was really looking forward to Dover, one of his favorite racetracks. But I'll tell you, when you've laid out for six months and you jump on this place right here, you have tackled a bear. Now, three cars have had to drop to the back of the field. The double zero you see there is Buckshot Jones. A non-approved engine change was made. And there's a rule of an NASCAR Bush Series about that. He had to drop to the back of the field. That's Casey Atwood, who despite qualifying in 19th, was found to have fuel in the race car that did not conform to the guidelines that NASCAR has with Unical. Because of that, he has dropped to the back of the field. And Steve Grissom, who was already back there, had a non-approved engine change as well. So those three guys will start from the rear of this 43 car field. Yeah, well, uh, you know, we'll get into that a little bit later, getting ready to go green here, but uh, the fuel thing and the motor thing, they're, they're both, uh, they're explainable. It's not, yes. a big, it's not a big deal. But nevertheless, uh, they are against the rules, and hence, they start shotgun. Big enough deal to put you in the back. <laughs> I you that. Set to go, glad you're with us, folks. 
We have two flag men, one official and one, that young man in the front row, who always watches here at Dover. in the eight and a host of cars tangled up coming off turn two where the same thing as happens off turn four the track narrows by 10 feet and it's kind of like you're going through a, a bit of a tunnel coming off the turn chuck bowen right there a lot of damage chuck bowen's car the left front corner really pushed back on that car he also wrecked yesterday in practice, so this second car that he's uh, had problems with this week. And Eli, to explain uh, the coming off the corner problem, you carry so much speed through the corner here that you just run out of room. That wall gets you before you even know it. Here's what happened. Let's uh, see, if we can see who went first. 61, and that's Tony Roper, first time here. He just so gets up there and gets just loose. Gets loose. Yep. Bobby Labonte in the 44 goes by. A lot of cars are going to the low side of the racetrack. It's very narrow over there, and the racetrack is banked nine degrees down the back straightaway there, so they slide to the inside automatically. I think we took another look at that real close. That, that car looked like it had a left rear tire down on it. He was, uh, that looked like what got him loose. Looked like his left rear tire was low on air because uh, it was wobbling on the wheel before he hit the wall. So, the Jeff Hensley crew goes to work on Chuck Bounds' car. Everybody else pulling away under caution here at Dover. Kevin Grubb, uh, his, other, his brother, his it's brother, 83. Wayne. Wayne Grubb. Wayne Grubb. That's what I said. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, you called it. What am I having trouble hearing you then? I don't know. I didn't hear it. Uh, one error we did have, we had, uh, you had Bobby in the 44. It's Terry this week. Oh, okay. My Bonnie. Yeah. And I tell you, if we look at that replay, I believe that 61 yeah. car had a left rear tire flat, or low. All right. <coughs> okay, one arrow piece here. That's fine. Please count. <laughs> you are. You are. <laughs> It doesn't make any difference, but, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> since you mentioned it. Uh, They're pushing uh, the petty car back down pit road there, too. Okay. I didn't, I didn't see, did he hit something? I don't know. It didn't look like it, but he must have. The car didn't, he must have run over something. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. Adam Petty's machine being pushed back to the NASCAR Bush Series garage area here at Dover Downs International Speedway. He and a host of others involved in that accident. Glenn Jarrett is down in our pit lane now with a look at some interesting features in today's Tech Fact. Hey, thanks, Eli. You know, one of the very first things we noticed when we came to Dover this time, I'm going to show you right over my shoulder here. If you can see it from the racetrack, that's right at the entrance of turn one how the area up in the groove is much lighter. It continues down on into turn one, down in the middle of turn two, all the way around the racetrack in the turn areas. 
specifically, they have taken a laser device and have smoothed out the surface on this racetrack. Now, they did it a year ago, or a year ago last fall, when the IRL cars ran here and made it much smoother. This time, they came back and really did it right. And what it has done, it has made speeds here at Dover faster than we have ever seen them before. Dick Trickle's new track record was over two miles, or almost two miles an hour quicker than the previous track record. It seems like every time we come back here, they figure out some way to make this concrete racing surface just a little bit better. They certainly have made it quicker this time. And it's very much a cooperative effort because that machine was operated by a contractor who was recommended to this track by Dallas Gardner from the National Hot Rod Association after that sanctioning body used the same machine at the drag strip at Englishtown, New Jersey. So uh, they said, hey, it worked for us. Try it. Indeed, they've made the play. But look at Winston Cup qualifying. 32 guys broke the track record. Oh, it's, it's incredibly fast. And most of the speed is through the turns because there's not the big bumps there that upsets the cars. Ernie Irvin's federated entry being worked on by the crew. Ernie waits. I don't know how patiently, but he waits. We're back in a moment. Maybe they could fix it. It didn't look that bad. Yeah. Poked a hole in the radiator. You're going to put him James in James Spencer had the same thing happen last yeah. week. You're going to put him in a radiator in there. Yeah, I know. I blew up. I came rolling in the pit, and Spencer was coming out when I was going in. And I come around there, and there's an ambulance, medics, people laying on the ground, <laughs> a toolbox turned over. I said, uh oh, oh, Spencer done lost it, man. He's going to call him berserk, <laughs> run over a toolbox, <laughs> kill somebody in the pit. In the truck. <laughs> 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 They turned over their toolbox. Yeah. And some lady passed out from heat exhaustion. Oh, but my. it looked like he did it all. <laughs> well, there was some... Um, looked like Mr. Bowen is going to the garage. Some politician had a heart attack. Died in the grandstand there. Really? Yeah. They ain't gone. Yeah. Bad little stretch there, boy. Yeah, we're having bad luck at Charlotte. It's ought to be interesting. Stanton Barrett and Kenny Irwin Jr. together there. Uh, ugly. <laughs> hey, have you had a chance to go online lately and check out country.com? You ought to do so. That's TNN's home on the World Wide Web. And it is your personal source for all things country, from race cars to country stars, country.com, our home on the World Wide Web. And don't forget to check out NASCAR online as well, before, during, and after the races at nascar.com, your 24-hour NASCAR garage pass. We're going to be on there after the race tomorrow, uh, a bit of a chat session while we're all heading up the highway to uh, the airport. Got uh -huh. the cell phone on the hands-free operation, taking questions. It'll be relayed to us. A live road with you. You shouldn't do anything but drive. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, by the way, Eli, another, I'll be at home by the pool listening to you. Another so. Yeah. Mention my name if you get a chance. I was so sorry to see you didn't qualify for tomorrow. It's uh, yeah. It, it was unfortunate. Well, we just didn't have a good weekend. The car wasn't very good, and uh, we just couldn't make it good. That was the whole thing. And Philippe and Derek, and all the guys worked hard, but just just couldn't make it happen. That's the good thing about this business. There's next week at Michigan, oh, yeah, and then the yeah. week after that at Pocono. So this, this is right my this is one of my Achilles heels. This racetrack is. I've had trouble here since they concreted it, but I like Michigan and I like Pocono. So look and out. We look forward to seeing you there. Adam Petty's car we showed you being pushed to the garage area. Ralph, how significant the damage? Well, Eli, they jacked the car up. They're taking the radiator out. Adam, can you tell me what happened out there to your car? Oh, uh, uh, I just saw somebody wrecking in front of me, and, uh, and everybody was hitting the brakes, and I, 
I checked up the mix it and um, I got in the back of Randy and Randy hit the brakes and I run over some debris, there was a lot of debris on the track and I run over some of it and it popped the oil cooler off the car and uh, I don't, if it didn't blow it up, I don't know what happened, but uh, can't get this bunch off our back, we're the first car out both weeks. Charlotte was my fault then this and then uh, we'll be back there, we'll get it going. Frustrating part of the season for Adam Petty right now, Eli, as they go to work on this car, they're trying to get it fixed up, get him back in. Hope to see him back in. Now you see Chuck Bounds' car being pushed behind the wall. Same car, same power plant he used to finish seventh at Charlotte last week. How quickly your your luck can change. Oh, yeah. Let's look at this wreck again. I, I want to look at that 61. See if we can see that car real close, that 61 car up on the outside. There's Eagle Eye Walter says he has yeah, a flat tire. Yeah, watch this 61 car now. If we zoom in close enough, before we ever hit the wall, look at that left rear tire. Yeah, you're it right. is. You're right. Good that old baby. Eagle Eye. Yeah, that, that baby yeah. got a... He lost a left rear. Yeah, and that's why he's fun. I'm trying to help old boy out because he ain't never been here and I don't want him to go home feeling bad. Tony Roper's a good race car driver. A darn good race We've car driver. We've seen him in the American Speed Association on the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. and uh, But he said, hey, this is my first time here. I am kind of antsy. Yeah, well, see, us old drivers, we got to look out for each other because them crew chiefs <laughs> to say, well, he just lost it. Yeah, yeah, but that's awful early to lose the tire. He must have something rubbing or something for it to go flat that quick. Probably low air. Real low air on the left side tire. So you get a lot of buildup on this concrete. Uh, as much as 16 to 18 pounds in the right front and uh, 12 pounds down the left side. So you drop the tire way, way down to start the race. You see that shot referencing back to Glenn's Tech Fact a little while ago. You can see those white patches all around the racetrack. There's one. There's a big one right there. Those are those areas that Glenn was referencing, and now a close-up, how they were uh, shaved. We're very good, buddy. <laughs> I was watching Daryl. I thought I'd get in on this. <laughs> yeah, got any more? Can we see some more of those? <laughs> hey, Chuck Brown, uh, his car's gone behind the wall, and let's get an update on, on that situation. Chuck, can you tell me what happened to you out there? Well, we were coming off turn two, and the 61 car got in trouble and started to spin. I don't know if he had help or just lost it, but, you know, bottles everything up here at Dover like it always does, and I seen it happening and started slowing down. I was deep in the pack. There weren't very many cars behind me, and I thought, this is okay. We'll get woed down to get through this mess. We'll stop if we have to. And I got slammed from behind. Somebody didn't see it or whatever. It hit me at full speed and just knocked me right into it. In turn, that bounced me off a car and into the inside wall where we knocked the front clip pretty much right on the ground on the Exxon Superflow Chevy. So very short day for us. Very disappointing. Tires weren't even really up to temperature yet. You know, we were just trying to that land and uh, work our way up there. No chance today. He likes you wrecked in two days. Tough weekend for Chuck Brown. Indeed so. And uh, Chuck will have to wait again next stop for the NASCAR Bush Series right here on TNN next weekend at the South Boston Speedway in Virginia. Well, that's going to be a barn burner there. Is. I tell you what, you want to get back to the roots of auto racing, that's where to start. Yeah, right how, many, uh, how many Winston Cup drivers ever won that race? Not many. They won't be there. <laughs> <laughs> they will be, uh, for the most part, in Michigan next yeah. weekend, right. running at the Irish Hills. There's Mike McLaughlin in the number 34 car. He's now 16th. You know, but, uh, Buddy said that uh, he's good here because he keeps his pimp. That guy has had more bad luck over this the last year. several races. Every time I look up, he'll be running great, and the next thing you know, he's in some kind of altercation out there on the racetrack. Well, he, he was first in points after Nashville, and now four DNFs as they put the caution back out again. We're not going racing this time, but he had four DNFs in the seven races since Nashville. Wow. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. has had similar uh, luck this year. He either runs very well or he gets involved in an accident, and 90% of them he had nothing to do with, just being in the wrong place. Poor old Mike McLaughlin has gone from first to ninth in points. He's now 504 behind uh, Matt Kenseth and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Look at that racetrack. This track, folks, years ago, used to seat 25,000 people or so, and now it is 102,000 plus. They open the infield tomorrow for the fans who choose to camp there. It is just uh, spectacular to see how this place has grown up. Buddy, were you here the year they ran the motorcycles on this uh, horse racing track? Yeah, I was what the unfortunate. And went up what? there to watch them come through the corner, and the first thing they come through, they put about a half a pound of dirt right in my right eye. Yeah, and, and, they, <laughs> and they covered all the cars up in the garage area and the trucks. They were covered up with dirt. Did you run the race here on the with the horses? I don't yeah. remember Kale did. Yeah, and Bobby. me, Kale, Bobby, and uh, Benny or somebody. I don't remember, but uh, yeah, uh, Bobby. Uh, Bobby cheated. Uh, yeah, he went over here to Mel Josephs and he practiced, and the rest of us never had set on one of those silly things. Ralph Shaheen is down on the pit lane. Ralph, 
Well, we caught him with Tony Roper, who's come out of the medical center. Are you okay, Tony? And what happened up there? Yeah, I'm all right. Uh, I think we had a little contact with the car on the first lap there going to the first corner and uh, must have got the left rear tire down because I went into uh, going on the second lap and it just uh, come around on me. Uh, thought I felt it as I went into the corner, but uh, with everybody else behind me, I was just a pinball. Tony Roper will race another day and we are set to go racing. Dick Trickle is the race leader. Kevin Grubb, Stanton Barrett, Kenny Irwin. Next in line, followed by David Green. Yeah, you know, I think it's kind of interesting that the oldest guy in our that's driving now, Trickle, on the pole, probably one of the youngest kids in the sport is on the outside pole. So there's still some room in there for the old and the young. Kevin Grubb has been on the pole here before. He, he really gets around this racetrack extremely well. That's part of the key to this thing right here. If you ever get the right setup, shock, spring, sway bar, then it's not a problem. But if you don't, it can drive you crazy. Grubb sat on the pole, as you said, here last year in the fall race. Finished second place, which is a career best, and even led 17 laps. So the fact that Kevin Grubb is where he is shouldn't be a surprise. So, buddy, yeah. it's concrete. Concrete racetrack, is it harder than an asphalt racetrack? Well, a lot of people think so. I think I think the biggest thing is you don't get the sensation you get with blacktop. I think blacktop has a lot of heat generated in it. The lighter color here, you don't have the sensation of the car breaking loose all the time. And when it does, you're in big trouble. Yeah. I well, know concrete walls are harder than asphalt walls. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, this is a tough wall. I tried it out a couple of times. Never won. The kind of corner speed we're generating here right now will be unto you. Guys will say their hardest hits have been right here over the years. Here comes the good scramble now for position. The inside is Kenny Irwin in the rail back machine with Stanton Barrett in the 40 going high. David Green didn't need more offer than that either. He takes the 41 and will zip right to the low side. And just behind him there, that's Michael Walters in that purple car. Yeah. Or whatever color that is. That's right. it. You know, I noticed one thing about Michael's car. Those band-aids don't make a very pretty number, do they? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Mike McLaughlin is in 16th. There he is in the 34 car behind the yellow 36 of Fidua. And just ahead of number 17, Matt Kenseth. And he's got the foot cam on my Gould's Pumps car. Watch his left foot now. He'll just touch the brake right there, right back on the throttle. Very easy not to get the rear wheels loose. And now his ups are wide open. Yeah. See all these little pads right here? That's for heat. That's how much heat that there generates in the floor. It keeps from burning your heels. That's a Simpson innovation there. Little booties. So you can really <laughs> shake your booty if you want to. Barely burping that throttle. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, that's what you do. You burp it. Okay. He's on the brake there. And as he goes down in the corner, he gets back in the throttle just enough to really make it pull well, but not enough to get the rear wheel through. And that braking deal is absolutely doing no good. That's a driver thing. It's just for comfort. It makes you feel better, but it ain't slowing the car down a bit. Mike McLaughlin on the racetrack and the 17 car 10 feet of, excuse me, of uh, Matt Kenseth, the points leader uh, of the Bush Series. Had some problems yet late yesterday afternoon in practice. He blew the engine that they were going to run in the race. They had to put the backup engine in, which turned out to be the, the one that he used at Charlotte last week to finish third. So they pulled it right out of the car and put it right in this car. He had no laps on that engine before the race today. And he said they normally run those engines twice. They only changed valve springs. They did that. So he doesn't expect any problems out of it. So far, so good. Not so far, so good for Johnny Benson, though. Number 33 out of the groove, losing four spots. While Dick Trickle leads on a sun-drenched day in Dover, Delaware. That's what I said. Yeah. The killer. Mikey got by that group. Mikey's trying to hide her. He's moved up out of the just a little bit. He likes to do that. I taught him that. <laughs> wherever, I hear ya. Wherever everybody else is, you go to the opposite place, you'll be all right. Yeah, it's hard to pass a guy if you're running the same That's group right. he is, That's huh? That's right. 
Earnhardt Jr. will be a good car to keep an eye on. He's moving up pretty well. You know, Tony Sr.'s dad passed away this week. Yeah. Tony Uri's dad passed you away. You know his name, don't you? Ralph. 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 Yeah. He's a, he was a plumber in uh, Annapolis. Also, he drove race cars for years. And Dale Earnhardt Sr., uh, he had built motors. Ralph. Really? Ralph Earnhardt did. Yeah, we'll mention that a little later on. Yeah. I talked to Tony about that. He was very, he said Charlotte was a tough time for him. Yeah, his mom, Gene, died in this race week a year ago. Yeah. Huh? In the fall. Look, look at Aaron Hart. Look, look at, Mike, look look at Michael. He's up in the, he's 145 a liter. He's closing down on that front crowd there. Yeah. Mikey. Okay. He's coming, I tell you, he's flying. Right on the bottom. See what he's doing. He and Kenseth started side by side. Look where Kenseth's at and then look where Earnhardt's at. But look, he still ain't passing Michael. Michael's 145. He's 143. Ned. Where y'all coming from anyway? Hey, Ned. Come on, Ned. <laughs> well, look, he's pulling away from them and y'all want to watch him. What's wrong with y'all? High above the Monster Mile, that red number five is Dick Trickle. The blue and green is Kevin Grubb. They are separated by half a second. They then have about eight tenths of a second on Kenny Irwin, then David Green, and Michael Waltrip, who on the computer right now, DW, is the quickest guy on the racetrack. But the number three, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he's on the move, trying to tuck inside of Stanton Barrett to grab sixth position. Eli, that car is winning fast right around the bottom of the racetrack. You can see the left front. Now, he'll pull her down as he starts off the corner there. He's got a great line off that racetrack. Yeah, he's right running now. real low. Uh, Dale Jr. is, and then Michael's kind of moved up and got him a little bit higher line, so they're running two totally different lines around the racetrack, and both closing down on the lead. Kenny Wallace of the 25, he'll make the move inside of Stanton Barrett now in that channel lock car. Mike Dillon closing in in the rear flank. Just underway, 28 laps of 200 in the NBA Platinum 200 here on TNN Motorsports. Eli Gold, Buddy Baker, Darrell Waltrip, Glenn Jarrett, Rob Shaheen. Tomorrow, that same crew, plus Steve Burns and Dr. Dick Bergman for Winston Cup Racing, the NBA Platinum 400 tomorrow. Trouble, turn four. That's Steve, Steve Grissom, Grissom who Whoa. tags the wall. How many times have we seen guys hit the wall off turn four? And you can clearly see that Steve Grissom has himself a situation that he's going to get out of in a hurry, running 34th at the time of that accident. Eli, you hardly ever see a fuel cell lose enough fuel out like that to create a fire. But as you notice, it's not getting any worse right now. No, they but they uh, need to get there and do something. I, if I was going to get Steve, worse. he needs to probably hop out of that thing, though, because it could go up and he's just taking his time. He's not getting in any hurry at all. Well, right in this, in the back part of the car there, you have several fittings that go into the uh, the tank itself. The tank probably still in good shape but those fittings around the top there probably got off the top of the uh yeah, cell. more more likely the dry brake which is right over in here and boy i love this thing it works neat <laughs> <laughs> right over in there probably some fuel on that hose that goes down to the cell that hose may have gotten a hole knocked in it and let a little fuel out of it but that's not a big big deal really at least it didn't right now <laughs> uh, but there you see steve grissom walking away the veteran from gadsden alabama the fourth retiree of the event, see we can see here, up is already up into the wall. But how many times? I remember Kenny Schrader has taken. He took maybe one of the worst licks of his career at that corner. Rusty Wallace has uh, over the years. A lot of guys have. Hermie Sadler did. You know, what happens there is you want to get out of the groove here. The top part of the racetrack has a lot of buildup on, a lot of dust, a lot of rubber dust up on the top edge there. Once you get out of the groove, you're on your way to the wall. So we are under the second caution flag of the afternoon, lap 31 here at Dover Downs International Speedway. The pole center still pacing the field. Like to, trying to explain that to somebody, it's like your driveway. 
where you run back and forth out of your driveway. It's Brought to you by L.A. West Luxury Van. Available at select Same dealerships deal. nationwide. Yeah. Call for a free video. 800-786-VAN. Radio communications are provided by Racing Radio. For all of your radio communications needs, as well as scanners, call on Racing Radio at 1-800-669. That's a good one. Ten bucks. I love that. All right. All right. Hey. Okay. Hey. Alt Yeah, not yet. Y'all too? You? Sound like you. Uh, uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Bada boom, bada bing. And that's Brought to you by L.A. West Luxury Van. Available at select dealerships nationwide. Call for a free video. 800-786-VAN. Radio communications are provided by Racing Radio. For all of your radio communications needs, as well as scanners, call on Racing Radio at 1-800-669-1522. And by Feather Life, the official trailer of NASCAR, CART, IRL, NHRA, ASA, and World of Outlaws. Remember to call Feather Life for all your trailer and motor coach needs at 800-800-1230. Want to remind everybody that TNN Motorsports is now offering official NASCAR collectibles, including the exact die-cast replica of the Dale Earnhardt flashback Wrangler Monte Carlo. To order that car or any of the great NASCAR products you might want, call TNN Motorsports toll-free at 1-877-TNN-1999. TNN Motorsports, your NASCAR connection. Still working caution, Ralph Shaheen is down near the Dale Earnhardt Jr. pit area. Eli on top of the box is Tony Erie Sr., the man in charge of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car. Tony, your guy's coming on pretty strong. How's the car right now? This car is pretty good right now. Sliding around a little bit, but that's pretty typical here at Dover on the concrete. We're just trying to bite our time and get through that traffic there and get back up the front. We had a, got a little loose qualifying and end up back in the back a little ways, but... Uh, Car's real good right now. Uh, we'll probably make a few changes here when we stop. Right now, it's pretty good. What kind of changes do you think you'll make at this point? Well, the racetrack's going to tighten up. It always does, and uh, we'll probably have to free it up a little bit after it gets going here a little bit. Eli, a heavy day for Tony Urey Sr. as well today, as you know, at the passing of his father. Indeed, Ralph Urey passed away earlier this week, and all of us want to send our condolences to the family of Tony Urey, and uh, of course, Ralph Urey was a pretty darn good racer in his own right, buddy. Yeah, he was. He's a plumber from uh, Kannapolis, North Carolina, and he raced against Ralph Earnhardt. As a matter of fact, that whole family, they're all family, as a matter of fact. Tony Urey and, and, uh, and Dale Earnhardt married sisters at one time in their life, so, I mean, it's a very close group there, and last week had to be very difficult for them. We'll miss Ralph Urey. Indeed so. There's Dale Earnhardt Jr. The race leader, meanwhile, is Dick Trickle, who last year finished 12th and 42nd in the two races here at the Monster Mile. But, Big Glenn, maybe today's the day again for Mr. Wisconsin. Well, you know, Eli, could be. Uh, the car has, uh, seems to perform flawlessly so far. In fact, we've been listening to, uh, to Dick and his uh, crew chief, Brian Schaefer's uh, radio conversation. And Brian asked him under that caution, Dick, how's the car doing? And Dick's all of it. He said, well, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty good. It's, it's not loose or anything. And... Uh, you know, in fact, Brian, it's pretty doggone good. He said, I haven't even had to run it hard yet. So, uh, you know, he's out there led every lap so far and hadn't even really pushed the car. So I don't know if these guys got anything for him or not. Right now, it doesn't look to be. Another guy that's impressing me awfully a lot is uh, Kevin Grubb, the guy running in second. He's the only Bush Series regular right now running in the top five. So great job by Kevin early on here. But again, it is still early as they load the Steve Grissom car up onto the rollback. We're going racing here in just a few laps as we continue under yellow at Dover. Commercials out so we can get ahead. Yeah, I know. Man, that's good. You know, a lot of commercials. Yeah, they want to get them ahead. That's good. You want to stay with the racing, so. Oh. This ought to be good when Mikey and uh, yeah, they've closed. Earnhardt yeah. and all that bunch. Mm -hmm. And there's Kenny Wallace right with them. Yeah. That should be pretty interesting. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> but I'd like to, uh, need to say anything. Uh, Anybody? Good work in the pitch. 
Well, it used to be right down here. I don't yeah, think, I think no. I'm just going to catch him at the halfway point here, Glenn, because I think they probably took Steve to the medical center for a checkup. Yeah, is there, there's only one, isn't there? One down here in Winston Cup? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, one to go, one to go. I'll catch him here. This way I can kind of watch uh, my half of the pitch, too, and then we'll get him. Where are you standing, Ralph, so I'll know? Uh, right now, I'm just in front of the flag stand, Eli, straight across from it, waving at you. Just okay, I got you. By Michael Walters. I got you, thanks. Why, why doesn't anybody want to know where I am? Because I know where you are. Oh, okay, bye. Where is he? <laughs> Where? Okay. He's out there somewhere. <laughs> hey, Glenn, he's trying to pick one with uh, you. I, I, felt, <laughs> I felt overlooked, buddy. He's out there somewhere. He's picking the work on you. It's easy to overlook me from way up there. Ah. <laughs> All right, thanks. Hey, Eli, Thank you. I knew you guys wanted to talk about craft here, so I figured I'd just kind of appreciate that. Lock that out there, and then you guys could fill in the blanks. Oh, Thank it you. was a really beautiful segue. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to ask him why Dick Trickle's not having to drive so very hard, him leading it. His response is it's much easier to lead than it is to race back in the group. You oh, race yeah. the track and run a perfect lap. Must have been why my race career was so tough because I never lived. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was working hard out there, man. <laughs> Coming to the green flag, we'll ride with Matt Kenson. Thank you. 
Dave Carroll and all these guys on the team. I mean, they've worked awful hard, and uh, they just hate to end up like this. Eli, it's kind of interesting, and maybe Daryl can comment on it, and Buddy as well, that they say here at Dover you need to race the track in the early stages more so than the competition. And when somebody's a little bit impatient like that, it's got to be very frustrating. Well, what happens to you is you, you get somebody up behind you, and you'd like to let them go, but you can't really find a place. And if you start letting one guy by, the first thing you know, you're at the back of the pack. So even though you need to concentrate on driving the track, you still don't want anybody around your back bumper because just what happens to Steve, a little tap and around you go. For me, it was always easier to lead. I was running the racetrack instead of competition. So when I was looking at the racetrack and really concentrating on hitting the perfect line every every lap, it was pretty hard for somebody to close in. Back in traffic, you're trying to gain on cars that are running bad lines around the racetrack, and you start doing the same thing they're doing. Well, if you have a great car, it's really handling good, running good, nothing bothers you. But when your car's off a little bit and somebody gets up under you and starts bumping you or starts racing you real hard, you just really got to let them go or you'll be in trouble. Trouble for Tim Fidoa, number 36, the Stanley Tools entry is off the pace. He'll be heading towards the pit lane right there. Problems for Tim Fidoa in the early going here at Dover Downs. And while we watch him go down pit road, Earnhardt Jr. has moved all the way in the third place now. He is really picking them up and putting them down. It, it won't be very long before he's after those five points for leading the lap. Let's go to Ralph Sheehy. Eli, it's a flat left front tire for Tim Dino. They were seeing most left front tires, but it was the front that was flat. They changed it. A little problem with the left rear. Now he's underway. Oh, and he stalls the car. We got it going, though, didn't he? <laughs> One thing I might point out to you is that the Goodyear's happy hour for the Wednesday Cup cars has been extended 30 minutes, going to be an hour and a half. Goodyear is recommending scuffing all your tires for the race tomorrow. So uh, they had that problem at Richmond that uh, they don't feel like was their fault necessarily. I think they're trying to cover their bases here. Dick Trickle continues to lead. Tim Fiedewell loses two laps during that pit stop, and Wayne Grubb has taken his car to the garage. Tire problem? I never heard. Not that I heard from them. Yeah, never heard. Matt Kenseth slides up into him. Yeah, That's just probably, yeah, right there. Yeah, you can yeah, see yeah, on the see. left rear corner. Good eyes. Good eyes in the tape room there. I'll let you do it because you called it. You seen the flat tire? I didn't see that you one. Didn't see that one. They didn't show. One. They didn't show it to me. I'd have seen it if they well, showed that, it to me. That was what caused it. Oh. TNN Motorsports live coverage of the MBNA Platinum 200 is being brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Napa. TNN Motorsports live coverage of the MBNA Platinum 200 is being brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Napa, we keep America running. We are back. There is the interval. Six tenths of a second from the orange car, Dick Trickle. Back to the blue and green car of Kevin Grubb. Then you've got car lanes further back. There you see Tim Fidoa back on the racetrack, lost two laps before. He's at 37. DW, watch this. Yeah, watch right here what happens. The 17 car down on the inside. He wiggles a little bit, and bam, 
Eight wheels will get a lot more traction than four. Bounces off the 36 and keeps on digging. That was Matt Kenseth in the 17 there. Just light contact getting in the corner. A lot of times when you drive under a car like that, the back end will switch around a little bit. There is a draft season on the mile track. Well, they just take the air off this floor. I know I get tired of hearing about that, but that's what happens. It pulls the back of that car on the inside around. Either way, Ralph Shaheen, you lose a couple of laps in the deal. Yeah, he sure did, Eli, because they had the problem in the pits getting the left rear on when they went to change the left front. But the Goodyear officials have looked at the tire. They say there was a slow leak to the tire, so he definitely was losing air pressure. So Tim Fidoa finding himself in 37th. He's got uh, two laps down. He's got Ted Christopher just ahead of him right there. The NASCAR Bush North Series and Featherlight Modified Tour standout making his debut here. Ted tested here the 13th car, tested here a couple of weeks ago with Kyle Petty. And Kyle said the guy took to the racetrack like immediately. If Christopher's running on the lead lap at 24th right now. Yeah, he's a, he's a good race car driver, Ted Christopher. Is a, he doesn't surprise me when he does well. I'll tell you something else, too. The most dreaded thing you can have on a race car is a slow lead. I've been accused of that many a time. Eli, let me tell you something. We have a barn board. A guy just absolutely flying up through the field right now. Ward Burton is absolutely... He, is, he started yeah. way back, and he's flying up I didn't through even the know. That, that's him in that... Uh, in the what? Siemens car, the 0-2. Yeah, that green up to thing. six. I know one thing. He's passed Michael and Kenny Irwin and several cars to come right, right to the front. They see Dick Trickle, but Ward Burton only three seconds behind the race leader. There you see the front three. They come by. Then you've got David Green. Then Ward Burton next in line. There he is right there. It is his first Bush Series start in three years. He last started the Bush Series race 79 events ago as Mike McLaughlin is coming to the pit lane running in 15th spot. This is lap 60, Glenn. It's a little bit early. Yeah, they've been fighting about races since that last restart, Eli. It's really concerned him. It only started after that restart, and he ran along there really racing Matt Kenseth for 13 and 14 really, really hard. And so he finally ready to say, guys, i got to come in. They don't know what the problem is. Mike was asking if they had torqued the wheels before the race. Thought maybe that the right front had worked loose or something. But uh, here he comes right now. We're trying to get a look and see just exactly what is wrong with that car. This is a tough break for him. They're also going to make a safety adjustment on the car. They put the uh, wrench in the right rear. And they're making the adjustment now. The car was a little bit tight. But uh, we're going to try to get a look at that right front tire just to see if there was a problem with the tire. I've got it right here. See anything wrong with that tire? Uh, so evidently the vibration must have been somewhere else. We'll check with Clyde McLeod, the crew chief. Now that Mike's down in the way, see if they've been able to determine just what the problem is. Mike has already lost two laps. He will probably lose a third before he comes up to speed. And there's again the 0-2 of Ward Burton, who will run Bush Series races at Michigan, Darlington, Charlotte, and Homestead as the season winds down. There you see from 32nd to 5th in a car that is owned by Bill Davis. Yeah, just pulling right up on David Green. I mean, this car is light and fast. I don't know how much he's leaned on the tires to get where he's at right now, but look how fast he goes by David Green. Man, Man it's like he's talking got tires and nobody else did. No. He's fast. Of course, he's not new to the Bush Series, though it's been three years since he ran. Remember, he had four Bush Series wins when he came to racing with A.G. Diller before stepping up to Winston Cup. And it's just the eleventh time he has run here at the Monster Mile. Well, not only that, but you got to remember Blaney is in the other Bill Davis yeah. Bush car, and I'm sure they're probably sister cars. And Blaney, we know how good he can run. So, uh, Ward's, he's turned up the heat here a little bit. He is running in fourth. Glenn, we're riding with McLaughlin now, and he's again on the low side of the racetrack, coming in one more time. What's the deal? Well, Eli, you know, I told you there wasn't anything wrong with the tire. There wasn't. The complete center of the wheel, half of it had broken out. I didn't see it. They're looking at the tire. They have covered it up now. Didn't want anybody to look at it, but I'm telling the world about it. So uh, whatever happened, they're bringing him back in now. They, they realize that there's a problem with the hub assembly. Something is wrong with the car to cause that to happen. So Mike's coming back in. The last thing, the very last thing that anybody wants to have a problem with here at Dover with the corner speeds they run is the right front of the race car. So they're coming, bringing Mike back in to see if they can determine what broke the wheel out of that. Well, as he was leaving the pitch just a second ago, Darrell Walton and I both 
right, right in front and was wobbling back and forth even after they put a new wheel on there. Yeah, a lot of times if they left that wheel loose, it'll mess up the lugs, the studs, and uh, when they put the other tire wheel back on, the nut won't run up and it won't tighten the wheel all the way up. Yeah, look who's quickest right now. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Ah, yeah, boy, and he put the pressure right on back to Kevin Grubb there. Got to be careful, though. Last year, Dale Jr. in the first race here started 16th, spun to enter pit road and still won the race. Last fall, he started 17th, came up to 8th, and here today, he started 15th and is now running third and threatening to grab second. Well, he may look like the fastest car on the racetrack, but apparently that computer don't look at Ward Burton very close because he is gaining on there. He is, he's cut that interval down to about a 15 car length uh, advantage right now. Let's go to Ralph Shaheen. He's watching Dale Earnhardt's climb to the front. Eli, this is good medicine for Junior right now as well. I was talking to him at driver introductions. He said, you know, I just don't feel right today. So I feel a little bit off. I said, you tired? No, not really. So I just, you know, some mornings you just don't feel like you're all together. Today is one of those days. He said, I've been getting good rest. I've been watching what I do. I've been running too crazy. He said, I'm doing all right. He said, I just feel a little off today physically. Right now, he's racing like he's right on the game. Maybe that's the problem as he goes for a second. Maybe he's getting too much rest. Well, Eli, one <laughs> of the things that Dale Earnhardt Jr. does, the same thing that Dale Earnhardt Sr. always did, is he puts that bumper right up against the back of the car in front of him and worries that guy right out of his way. Well, you saw he and Ward Burton both get around Kevin Grubb right there. So Dick Trickle continues to lead by a second and a half. You just got a peek at Ward Burton going inside of Earnhardt Jr. to grab second. We've got a dandy going on TNN Motorsports. Yeah. Help us. <laughs> Yow. I seen him coming way back, way Man, back I, in the I mean, it, All of a sudden, I didn't even pay attention to him. There he was. The trickle. He'll catch Trickle in oh, yeah. 15 laps because he's getting in the corner so much better. Man, he is. He is diving that thing off in that corner. What would? I asked, uh, do you hear what his brother said about him, why they talk so differently? No. He said Ward was brought up in the south end of the house. <laughs> 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 I'll lead you to that uh, today here somewhere. <laughs> He's going to catch him much quicker because these trickles fix to run into traffic. Mm -hmm. Earnhardt's running good, but he's, he's no match uh -uh. for the uh, Ward Burton car. Nope. That uh, Tommy Baldwin, uh, he said that is the reason that he wanted to run this uh, division was get more familiar with him. You know, that's why they're in here, to build a little better foundation for the Winston Cup car. And plus, Siemens his base jumps up the road and they wanted to run here yeah but it, five times this year he's yeah, going to run true, that's true yeah they're making that look uh oh who is that Somebody's. oh buckshot don't do it don't come down bulls here buckshot caution 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 right for front. the doubles here right front you can see it right yeah. there yeah yeah lap 76 That's getting close to pit. No, yeah, it's ain't around. I, I don't know. It's hard to say. I, they'll come in. I mean, they'll come in now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he God. slammed it. That right side, the flat as an ironing board. He slammed the wall. Buckshot Jones has brought out the third caution flag of the day, lap number 76. He found himself up against the wall in turn number two. Remember last year he was battling for second here when he hit the wall in turn three. Well, today he hits the wall in turn number two, and Buckshot Jones having a tough early go here on the MBNA Platinum 200. Eli, he'll be right back in the pits again. Oh, yeah. That car has got a lot of damage. The back end of the car has moved over. The right front corner is towed out. He's got a lot of problems they'll have to work on. Yeah. Well, here come the leaders. Lap number 77. If you're keeping tabs at home, that's when they'll be making their pit stops here. Dick Trickle, 
Lloyd Burton, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Kevin Grubb, all the cars on the lead lap coming in for service, lap 77 of 200. Let's go first down near turn number one, end of pit road, Glenn Jarrett. And Dick Trickle will come in, they're going to change four tires, fill him up with fuel, they're going to make absolutely no changes to this race car. When I asked Brian Schaefer if he would change it, he just looked at me and laughed and said, no way. They love the way this car is, Trickle loves it. Now what you got? Well, Ward Burton just made his pit stop, Glenn, four tires and fuel for him as well. He took a half pound of air out of the right front tire on the O2. Oh, look out there, we got tire getting away and a crew member just does retrieve it. Dick Trickle will beat everybody, of course, being in that very first pit stall. He didn't have far to go to exit the pit lane. It's a tight pit lane here. I it mean, is. They, they made it a little bit bigger than it used to be, but still it's really tight. Yeah, well, wow, we have a tire loose down pit road there, right against the outside catch wall there. What's a car owner's nightmare? It's a brand, it's a brand new, new tire. One. It still <laughs> has a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> you see that sticker on it, folks? That's what they call the new tires, sticker tires. That there sticker you go. there is from Goodyear. That's something they put on the tire as soon as they uh, manufacture it. And that was out of the Jeff Purvis pit area, we are told. And uh, they will retrieve that. Meanwhile, the cars now who are a lap or more down will be coming in for service, lap number 78. Ah, uh, the pensive look of fans and crew members here at Dover. <laughs> oh, my. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, he's been leading ever since he took the lead. Yeah. Whoa, really? <laughs> he's been leading since yesterday <laughs> afternoon. Now, there's a call, folks. <laughs> Y'all that are listening on the scanner, that was Darrell Walsh's straight call there. That's yeah. right. Yep, he's been leading ever since he took the lead. <laughs> <laughs> well, think about it. You know, every time you say something funny, I can see people down in the place down there They'll punch each other and laugh. <laughs> They listen to these things. Oh. All right. One to go when they get here. They've been working on the double zero for that's about the fifth time they've had to work on it, but it's still not fixed, I'll guarantee you. I'd be taking a lift right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since he's not running for points, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take a shot at him. Uh -uh. Well, this ought to be interesting now. Ward's right there on the back bumper. TNN Motorsports live coverage of the MBNA Platinum 200 is being brought to you by the more than 2,500 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by OnNet from MCI WorldCom, your one connection to the world. There you see Jeff Purvis's team busily at work. Glenn, what's cooking? Well, Eli, what I think, I'm standing down Pete Roseway, but I think, you know, we saw that tire roll off here. I think the car must have fallen off the jack. If we can get a shot of the left side of the car, there are four or three bungee cords holding it together. When the car fell or whatever happened, it ripped the entire left side sheet metal away from the car along the bottom. That's all one piece. And when it, it ripped it away, so they had to come in and fix him up, and we're about to finish. Restarting at lap 81. Good start for Trickle, who manages, at least for the moment, to keep her our junior in May, but here comes Dale Jr. Oh, he wanted to make that outside right. pass, but he ran out of room over there and he had to check up. Trickle has led every one of the 81 laps thus far. Earnhardt Jr. in the three car is second. Oh, Trickle, he's, he's pretty steamy. 
The yellow 36 is Tim Fidua. Remember, he is a couple of laps down still. Then the 02, that's Ward Burton. He is running third. Kevin Grubb is behind them in fourth. And then the other yellow car, Matt Kenseth, the number 17, he's in fifth now. Remember, too, that he was 13th before the pit stops, Kenseth was, and then picked up all those positions on pit lane. Robbie Reiser's bunch got him out of pit road in fifth position. And D.W., that's the best deal if you can pick up eight spots while just sitting on the pit lane. Yeah, it makes me wonder if he took four, too. I, I'm not sure. I didn't watch the stop, but that's a lot of cars he passed there just uh, on a pit stop. So it makes me wonder maybe he didn't take two tires. I tell you something, Vito, I better watch out. He's kind of holding that cat up. He got me going. Watch this deal here. Did Junior hit the wall here? Come right up. Yeah, he touched yeah, it. Sure you did. can see the car wiggle back and forth. He's very lucky. Yeah. He I know he, the down on the tires. he had a heck of a run off of, you know, around the one and two there trying to get to the outside to get around Trickle, so he ran out of room. Ralph, it doesn't look as though it hurt the car any. No, you either. There's been no talk about any damage to the right side of the car. I did want to update you on what they did during the pit stop. Tires and fuel, four tires, but no adjustments to the car. They went the same way they had at the beginning of the race. Yeah, I don't think he hit it. I didn't see any dust. Yeah. Well, there you see Kenseth right there, the 17. We've talked of him before. Just got around the lapped car as you ride with Kenseth now looking rearward. I was looking at the wall where, where uh, Dale Jr. came off the room. Yeah, there's a black mark up there. He touched it, but not, not enough barely. to hurt him. Yeah. Yeah. Now Kenseth looking forward towards Kevin Grubb. And remember again, the Stanley car for Tim Fidua, not on the lead lap. He's a couple of laps down, running at 34. You know, Kenseth's got a little damage to the right front fender there. That shot that we were looking at uh, got the right front fender pushed in a little bit. Yeah, and I think it was with Tim Peter while the car just behind him that he made contact with. Did they give him that? Yo! No. Actually, I, I think it was uh, well, that right there, buddy. Let me tell you, you see those, that's the concrete deal. That's what, even though it's as smooth as it is, those little cracks and creases and strips across there and is what heats the joint. Expansion joint. That's what heats those tires up, that little bit of movement that the car has in it. The lead, meanwhile, is tightening up again. Oh! Trickle. Yep, that's the famous Earnhardt move right there. He put the nose right up under the back of Trickle. Didn't touch him, but just, just like raising the back of the car up as he was coming through the corner. And that's something that Dale could always do. He could get that bumper so close to you that you swear he hit you, but he didn't. And that's the same way Junior does. You get that nose right in there, buddy, it'll worry you right out of the way. And this is the 10th race this year that Dale Earnhardt Jr. has led. That is the most of any driver in the NASCAR Bush Series. Now, Trickle's calling in uh, saying, you know, uh, my car is not as good as it was before I made that pit stop. Well, what he has to do now is regroup and just go back to running the Trickle line around the racetrack because Ward Burton's putting a lot of pressure on Earnhardt Jr. as they come around. He's starting to close in on it. Yeah, we believe Ward's got a bit of wee bit better car to deal with. Now, a little wee bit to translate into staying right where he is for a long time. Definitely, those first three cars are the class of the field. I mean, they have just pulled away and left everybody else in the way. There's a lot of racing going on behind them, but it's for, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth on back. They're two seconds ahead. These two guys, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the three and the 02 of Ward Burton, are two seconds ahead of everybody else now. Trickle and Kenseth and Grubb and Green. Todd Bodine, who is now up to seventh. But once these guys have gotten clear, they're trying to get gone, as they said. For the Mike McLaughlin fans uh, out there, they have that car fixed, and he's back up to full throne right now. He's really getting around the racetrack quite well. So whatever the problem was, they fixed it, and he's back underway. He is seven laps down at 37, but McLaughlin is out there running. You know, it's funny to me how we, uh, when the guys make a pit stop, how some of the guys can adjust on their cars and they take off and go forward and other guys will make adjustments and it, and it ruins the car and they go backwards. You know, the thing you got to remember, too, is that some of these guys, their notebook about Dover, particularly on concrete, but some of these younger guys, their notebook on Dover is probably about a page long, <laughs> that's all. Well, you know, that's another way, another reason why I think Winston Cup drivers have an advantage. 
is because not only do they get to practice in the Bush car, but they get to go down and practice in the Winston Cup car. They get twice as much track time, twice as much practice, which translates into a better race setup. Now Trickle there in the five plan. He's fallen about a second off Dale Earnhardt Jr. What's cooking there? Well, I was assuming that DW up there was listening to their radio uh, communication between them because right as Dale said that the Dick was saying that the car wasn't quite as good, he was telling Brian Jr. that, hey, Brian, this car is a little bit loose right now. So that set of tires just didn't hook up quite as well as the others did. He's fighting a loose condition right now, so they're going to need to tighten him up or hope that it will tighten up a little further into this run. We are five laps shy of halfway. We're coming back with a lot more from the Monster Mile as Dick Trickle's crew looks on. Their man's now in third. We have to go there, buddy. Yeah, no, feet are up. Did you see him when he got back in? No. We give him a little howdy. Thank you very much. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's what cut his tire down <laughs> early. Yeah, yeah that's when they got together. That's what we said, you know. And, well, he was putting a lot of heat on him there. I don't believe Kent has got but two tires. They need to check that in the pit. Yeah. Who's right. near the uh, 17, Glenn? Yeah, I'm on the way. Because he, he picked up eight positions on pit road on that last well, what stop. About, what about Dale Jr., too? How many did he get? No, he didn't give it two or three. Yeah. He came in third. <laughs> two or three. He just came, but he came in third. He came out third. I'm going to tell you one thing. Ward might have had the advantage before the pit stop, but I think Earnhardt Jr. is just yep. too fast now. Something happened. How, what's the lap thing here say? 97. 98. 98. Speed-wise, what are they? 145, 478. And 79. So. He's pulling away, though, is what I was saying. Yeah. yeah, good battle. Little Mikey and Joe Bessie. My brother has made a bad mistake. Yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> he was running fifth, and now, now he's, he's running 24th. 20 fifth. Yeah. I don't know what he did to his car, but uh, undo it. All right. He did take oh, oh, trouble, oh, trouble, trouble, big trouble, trouble big here. Ed, Ed Barrier and, and Casey Atwood. Atwood. All right, hold on, let's go. Leader's coming off the four. Come on, Casey. Hustle up, trying to get across okay. the line. Go. That ain't gonna help him. He's got no, problems. he's he's. He stayed on the lead lap, but ain't going to make no difference. Uh-oh, 77. I'm just putting out a little bit of sparks coming out the back. Come on down, pit road, Casey. Put your scuffed tires on it. I guess. Yeah. If you got scuffed fenders, you might as well use scuffed, scuffed tires. tires. <laughs> <laughs> Bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to the garage, Ed Barrier. We are halfway home in the MBNA Platinum 200, but Ed Barrier's not going to see the checkered flag today. He and Casey Atwood got together at turn number four. Fun off the corner down the main straightaway. Casey, as you see, has made it around in the Castro okay. car to the pits. But Ed Barrier's afternoon seems to be done. And never pretty when he's going to take the big old mallet. Yeah, yeah let's see happened. if we can tell what happened here. I believe that 77 must have spun in front of him. Now there they oh, are. No, oh, no, 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 no. Casey no. caught the lip of the racetrack. No, he, he wobbled. Yeah, Casey caught the apron. Half the car was on the banking, half yep. on the flat. Ow. And it shot him up. Yeah. That yeah. barrier hard into the inside wall. And you're on a nine degree bank there. When you come across, it just feels like it picks up speed. Oh. You can see everybody there going, what do I do? And yeah. into the inside, look how wow. hard he hit That's there. a hard man, right on the, the driver's side. side. See, that track is, it's banked. It goes down like that. And when it does, I mean, it just picks up speed as it comes down that hill. Yeah. Boom. Mm. And I, folks, I got to tell you, television does not do these wrecks justice. Those. No, because that was a hard lick to the outside, and then he spins all the way across the racetrack. Now, when he hits right there, oh. you can see that. That's 32, what, 3,200 pounds. That would have Bush car weighs at 34. Yeah. 34. 3,400 pounds ricocheting off of a wall like that. That's, that's, that's a hard lick. Hold on. Put your 
Defender at the top there, Jason. Right up at the top. Wow. Meanwhile, there's what remains of, you know, of Ed Berry's car. You rarely see a guy hit just one wall, like you say oh, no. here. It, especially at the exit of the corner of yeah. two and four, the way that track narrows up on you. Well, it narrows up, and then it's, the, the straightaways are banked. Now, what are they, nine degrees? So, uh, I mean, you're going to go down the hill into that inside retaining wall. Actually, more than that, straights here are 16 degrees, so it really throws you downhill. Yeah. Meanwhile, there's Ward Burton. He is running in second spot right now. Ward in that Bill Davis car. And Ralph, you know, they had hoped to qualify at California for the Bush race, but remember, got rained out and all. So this has been a, a nice turnaround for them. This has been a fantastic turnaround for them, Eli. Tommy Baldwin is the crew chief for Ward Burton. How's the car right now, Tommy, and what adjustments will you make at the next stop? The car's pretty good right now. We got it a little tight from the center off. Um, we're contemplating on what kind of adjustments we're going to do with this team at Pontiac. And uh, I only went halfway. I should have went the whole way I wanted to do, but. We're going to wait for it. Hopefully we'll get a caution uh, about another 50 laps and uh, hopefully we'll get a good stop, make the necessary adjustments and try to win this thing. How important are these push races going to be to the development of the relationship between you and Ward and what you can do with the cup car? Uh, it's been big so far right now. Uh, you know, we learned a lot and uh, we transferred some couple things over from qualifying the Bush car to the Winston Cup car and uh, we ended up 15th on the cup. But uh, I think we're going to learn a couple things today with the Siemens Pontiac we would make some air pressure adjustments and uh, hopefully we can start the race with those. So there's the word from the pit lane as the field is going to get the one to go signal when they get back to the start finish line. And let me uh, quickly correct myself and say that indeed you were correct. It is nine degrees on the straightaways here, not well, 16. I had. Uh, well, I had something I colloquially call something else, but I'll just say I forgot. <laughs> I know, I know, I don't know, I don't even know how much nine degrees is, but I thought that's what that straightaway yeah. was. <laughs> you are indeed and, correct. And the corners are the same as Charlotte, 24 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, let me say something about Tommy Baldwin. He's a sharp young man. He is. A very, 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 very good crew chief, and he comes from good, good stock, too. His dad was a great driver. Uh, Tom Baldwin drives that black number 7 NY on the NASCAR Featherlight Modified Tour as the crew continues to work on Casey Atwood. Don't forget tomorrow, right back here at the Monster Mile, the NBNA Platinum 400. And join us if you can before the race begins. We'll have all the last minute news in the garage area on the preview show. That starts at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, right here on TNN Motorsports. That's coming up tomorrow afternoon. Half lap away from going back to green, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Ward Burton, Dick Trickle, Matt Kenseth, Kevin Grubb, David Green, Kenny Irwin. Hey, Jason Keller's up to eighth now with Kenny Wallace ninth and Jeffrey Bodine to restart in tenth. Let's ride with Kenny Wallace. He'll give us the ride over towards the green flag. Johnny Norton atop the flag stand. This one, the spotter says, be ready, be ready, be ready. Go, 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 go. You know, you really got to work with your spotter. You got to anticipate that green flag coming out. You can't wait for it to come out if you're back in the pack a little bit. You got to anticipate it, and you got to be ready to move. Jeffrey Bodine, Terry Labonte, Todd Bodine, Elton Sawyer in the 98. You've got Johnny Benson in the 33. The 56 is Mike Dillon. 74, Tony Raines, and now Ernie Irvin, with whom we're riding. Wow, you can see a lot of cars there. Man. They're proud of cars. I'm Almost to wreck them. That's a gaggle. That's a gaggle of cars right there, buddy. And they are hammering on each other, too. Michael Walter and Joe Bessie made a little bit of contact coming off turn two this second go. We're, we're back with the leaders right now. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and you see there Ward Burton in the 02. First appearance in that car. He's doing quite well. He really is. I think somebody else, if he hadn't had trouble, looks to me like getting off a good car today, too, is that 36 car. Uh, speed one hanging right in there, buddy. You know who else had a weird day is your brother. He was running real, real well, and now Michael's all the way back in 27th spot. Ralph, I see you lurking down there. What's the story? 
Well, apparently, Eli, the story with Michael Waltrip is that he got together with the 37 Grub car, they had a little come together sheet metal, that have affected the tow adjustment on Michael's car, which has now been knocked out a lot, so the car's not handling the way it did at the beginning of the race. I knew something had happened to it, because uh, he's going to take that thing in there and put a Band-Aid on it. Oh, there's oh. contact there. there, there the this crowd right here, there, this is a big... This, this is going to be big. That was Jeff Green and Tony Reigns. They made a little contact there, but they're running side by side. And I tell you, there's not much margin for error there. You can slip just a little bit and contact face. I've been, I, I've been holding my breath watching that group. See the folks from Napa bringing you timing and scoring from NASCAR. One, Randy LaJoy. Haven't talked much about him. He's in 24th position right now. Just makes the move around Jeff Krogh in that white number 56. 93 is Dave Blaney. And Michael Waltrip right behind. And of course, Blaney is uh, Ford Burton's teammate. So, uh, you know, they've got some good bush cars. I did ask, though, and that car was built for Ward, Ward Burton. It's not one of his cars right. that they're using. It's, it's a brand new car built for Ward, Ward Burton to run these five races with. Six is Joe Bessie. He works the low side of the racetrack in 27th spot. There you see some of Brady's picked up four spots since the most recent restart. Only his 35th career Bush Series race, Dave Blaney, but we talked about him forever with his Pennzoil World of Outlaws career and so on. 192 feature wins. The guy who drives that 93 Amico car. Yeah, next year he's going to move up to Weston Cup right. for Bill Davis. So uh, apparently Bill Davis sees that he has a lot of talent and he wants to move him up. Up front, Dale Earnhardt Jr. still shows the way. He's got seven-tenths of a second on Ward Burton, Matt Kenson, and the rest of the field here at Dover. We're back in a moment. That's 74. Hey, guys in the pits, I want somebody to talk to Yuri and them. They got that car a lot better than before that pit stop. Which car? The three. Yeah. Yeah, we're over keep here. We got to get Casey out with first buddy, and then I'll go back over to the three. Okay. Yeah, and keep an eye on that 74 car. He got a tire ribbon. I think Earnhardt may have a thing in his shop where he teaches his drivers to move them like that. <laughs> you think a little yeah, diagram? I'm fine. He plays a lot of video games. Maybe I have something <laughs> to do with it. Huh. You know what? He told me that before he goes to like Pocono or here or any place, he does the video game for five, six hours. Yeah. Earnhardt said. Yeah. Hmm. I've heard that. I'm worried about that 74 car. He got left rear tire rubbing it a little bit. Not a good place to have it go out. Uh-uh. Somebody bumped into it. Ward's starting to struggle a little bit all of a sudden. I think it done used up his cars. I don't know. This just hadn't come back up to speed since that last stop, unless Earnhardt's just picked it up that much. Uh, mile per hour wise, 146. Now that's that's the fastest yeah. he's run, yeah. so he's he's checking out. Yes, he is. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what happened. Something happened. Yep. I hear it. Did you hear it come by? Thunder. Huh. Hey, guys. Yeah. Oh, two cars dropping a cylinder or a valve or something. All right. All right. Hear him when he comes by. Go. There is the race leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Lap speeds now quicker than anyone has run today. But all of a sudden, Ward Burton, who is still in second, has dropped a second and a half behind. There's the margin right there. Ralph, he just can't keep up. No, Eli, it is definitely an engine problem. Ward is radioed in. He thinks it's either a valve or a piston. He doesn't expect it to last but a couple of laps. He's already told the crew, guys, it's going to be over in just a little while. That's got to be a helpless feeling, huh, fellas? But it is when you're running as good as he is. And, I mean, he had to slow down that much, but he's not keeping up with David. 
Eli, when he comes by, you can definitely hear it's all uh, one tone because when he comes by, it sounds like a tractor instead of a race car when he comes by. It's got a real certain sound to the motor. Well, if you take the 02 car out of the picture, then you're going to have a lead for Dale Earnhardt Jr. of four seconds on the man who is now third, Dick Trickle, who's become the second place runner, obviously. But uh, right now, Dale Earnhardt Jr., 146 miles an hour or so, and uh, that's faster than anybody's run today. Yeah, they've been in the 144 range most of the time, so he definitely has stepped it up a notch. Darrell, when, when you see him out there running on that, or losing cylinder like that, first thing you think about is where did all that metal go? If, it, if you <laughs> drop a valve, where did it go to? Yeah, well, it, it's, it's going around in that engine right now. If it doesn't find any place to land, it'll be all right, but it's probably going to land somewhere. It ain't going to be good for the engine here for long. The attrition rate has grown again. Ed Barrier has taken his car to the garage after the accident of earlier, and now Casey Atwood has retired his car as well. Let's get an update for him. Well, Casey's car is up on Jack Dan's Eli. They're getting it ready to load it up on the truck. Casey, what happened between you and Ed Barrier? We was real loose there since the beginning of the race, and uh, I about wrecked four or five times the car was so loose. We had a guess on the setups, and uh, we kept making adjustments to make it better, and it just didn't work out. So I got inside of him, and this car just spun out on me. I hate it for everybody that got into it, and, and the Castro team. We break three weeks in the road, so they got to work it out on again. So Casey Atwood will be with us next weekend in South Boston, Virginia. Tim Fidua in the 36. Still a couple of laps down, but he gets around Ward Burton as Dale Earnhardt Jr. continues to lead in front of a huge crowd here at Dover. Here comes Trickle now catching up with Ward. Jason Keller, just, he's doing a nice job, he too. Is. He's just being we really careful. He won at Bristol, right? Yes, he did. Yeah. Okay. That's an interesting team. I mean, those guys. Yeah, him and Green. Yeah. yeah. And D'Souza and those guys, I mean, they don't, <laughs> they don't know nothing. They don't say squat. <laughs> they don't know nothing. <laughs> And winning races in 57. Uh, Jason Keller is now in sixth. All right. Michael and Randall LaJoy having a little run together here. Yeah, they're up to uh, 22nd, 23rd. Mikey just gets way too high. Yeah, he's burning. But he gets a good run off the corner when he does. <laughs> <laughs> I think LaJoy, I think LaJoy let him go. I don't think he couldn't see where he was. He's so high. Eli, have you done a drop back at all? No. Have, have we posted anything as far as where everybody's at? No. There's Dale Earnhardt Jr. who continues to lead. I know we reminded you earlier, but once again, don't forget that TNN Motorsports is offering you official NASCAR collectibles, including the exact die-cast replica of the car that Dale Earnhardt drove at the Winston a couple weeks ago, that Wrangler Monte Carlo. If you want to order that or any of the other great NASCAR collectibles that you've seen, TNN Motorsports is the number to call, 1-877-TNN-1999. That's the number for TNN Motorsports, your NASCAR connection. So Dale Earnhardt Jr. continues to lead now by four seconds over second place Ward Burton. How's the day gone for Dale Earnhardt Jr.? Well, he took Barrett early to grab sixth place away as he began his climb to the front. 
He took second place from Kevin Graff. Hit the wall, but it didn't bother him any. And then bumped his way with a little thank you coming through to Dick Trickle and took the lead at lap number 89 as Trickle led the first 88 laps. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. has had the top spot as we continue. We are back live at 132. That's the lap count of 200 here today. You know, Ward Burton said he had a cylinder or something wrong with the engine. I wouldn't be surprised if that thing doesn't have a broken head or an exhaust leak or something because they can't run that good on seven cylinders. Uh, so he's still maintaining second place. Trickle has caught him, but they haven't been able to do anything with him. You know what we've not talked about? We better mention Jason Keller right now because Jason is up to fifth place. There he is in car number 57. He got around Kevin Grubb. He's closing in on the 41 of David Green. You know, you wonder what the deal is. He, <laughs> he doesn't say much. Jeff Green doesn't say much. And I said to Jason yesterday, said, What's, why so good? He goes, when me and Steve Addington got together again, driver and crew chief, he said it made a world of difference for me. Now, a couple of things. It's a new team, and uh, the Sioux, Steve and Susan, those guys on that team are doing a great job. They're real, they're real open-minded. The other thing is, they tell me that the engines in those cars, Dennis uh, Fisher. Fisher engines with John Wilson over there, is making some mighty fine numbers right now, and that's helping them a lot, too. Well, uh, too, uh, Jason is a, a fine driver. Everybody kind of wrote him off, but now he's just doing a great job. Dick second Trickle. place, Dick Trickle finally gets around Ward Burton to grab second, but those fellas are six and two-tenths seconds behind Dale Earnhardt Jr., the leader. Picking up on what Buddy said, it just always amazes me how those guys that they write off become right on when they get in the right car. Exactly. I tell you, it makes all the difference just in the world. Just like they said, you know, you, you tear up an anvil, man. You're hard on equipment. You're getting a good car, and they go, you know, you're starting to be smart yeah, now. You finally, <laughs> you finally figured it out. <laughs> Let's go to Ralph Shaheen. Now with Tommy Baldwin again, three feet for Ward Burton. Tommy, what's the story on the engine in your car? Uh, we got a miss in the motor, and it's just not going down the straightaway. It's a shame because the Stephen Ponick was going real good today, and, uh, you know, he's got a... He's got to drive the car in so deep and ruin the car through the corners, but we're going to try to hold on and maybe get a top five out of this today. He's driving the car that deep in the corner, going to be hard on the tires? Uh, he's trying to make up for straightaway speed, and now the car don't know what it wants to do in the corner because of that. Hopefully we can get some fresh tires on it, get a caution, uh, maybe we can catch a break. The leader working some traffic, Dale Earnhardt Jr. You saw him go by Stanton Barrett moments ago in that 40 car. He'll now try and challenge Glenn Allen Jr. to put him to the inside and a lap down. That's 28th spot who's about to be lapped. Boy, I tell you, he's putting that car through a horrible pace right there, trying to pass two cars up out of the corner and does so. That's just more and more insurance. The more cars you can get between you and that guy in second place, then when you do run up on somebody, you can't just drive by. It doesn't hurt you so bad. Hey, look who's there on the right of your screen. That's Matt Kenseth, who now has backslid to 10th place in his last six races, five top four finishes. But Glenn, now all of a sudden, he's back to 10th. Yeah, Eli, uh, they made a chassis adjustment on the car when they did it a while ago and took off four tires. They're also trying to loosen the car up, but the car has become very, very tight. And Matt Kenseth will be the first person to tell you he hates a tight race car. He just simply does not like driving when the fact that we watched him come off a four about two laps ago and he really, really came close to knocking the wall down out there. So he's fighting a very tight race car right now. They're looking for a caution to get that thing in here and make a big adjustment on his car. I think every, when, when you got somebody running like Dale Jr. is, everybody's looking for a caution to make adjustments. they got to do something to catch up with him in a hurry. Because he's going to put a bunch of cars down a lap here pretty quick. And look, we only have 59 laps to go. As you see, MCI WorldCom bringing you NASCAR timing and scoring. It's, we've had four cautions, but this race has really flown right by. It's kind of like Charlotte was last week. You know, that race, there was some cautions early, and then everybody had to work hard the rest of the night there in Charlotte. Same way today. Early cautions and none late. Darrell, they were just talking about tight and loose on, on cars. When you're talking about a car that's tight, one thing you have to do, when it starts pushing up towards the outside with the front end, the front end loses grip, you have to back out of throttle to make it react to you what you want it to do in the corner. If it's a little bit loose, you play with the throttle and maybe sometimes run a little bit quicker than if it's pushing real bad. Yeah, because when the car is pushing, you got the wheels turned to the left. I mean, you're making a left-hand turn and you need to get the throttle down. These engines don't have a lot of power. You gotta get the throttle down. You get the front wheel turned hard left, you're in the power, all of a sudden you lose grip in the front end and you're headed for the wall. And the only thing that'll stop that thing from doing that is to back out of it. 
You saw 25th place Joe Bessie just go a lap down to Dale Earnhardt Jr. Oh, here we go. You have a problem here on the main straightaway. Shane Hall. is Shane Hall. Look out below as everybody manages to just get by. Shane Hall spins off turn number four. Caution. Lap 145. 55 laps from the finish, guys. Time to show what you got. Oh, man. It's show and tell. This will be fun now. Yeah, and that pit, uh, your pit stop could win the race for you right now. Getting out there and getting that track position is so very important. Well, I think some guys made some adjustments on the last stop that they're not happy with. They can undo those now and maybe get their cars like Trickle. I think he can help his car a lot. Some others. Shane Hall was running 19 for the time of the accident. Whoa, it oh, looks like he had a little help there. Andy Kirby might have uh, touched him. Or what was that after the I fact? I think that's after the fact. Uh, Andy Kirby hadn't been running fast enough to anybody, I don't think. got to be careful up here. We'll have several replays, <laughs> I guarantee you. I've been watching Andy, though, and he's been, uh, I don't think he really caused that. No, I, Shane was already well yeah. sideways. And I didn't mean that unkindly to, to uh, <laughs> Andy. He, I just been watching. He hadn't been on up to speed much today. So if that happened, it, if he did something, it was uh, purely an accident. All right. So here comes the field. Now comes the field to turn number four. Only the cars on the lead lap will be able to pit here. Lap 146 will be pit stops. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is in, Dick Trickle, Ward Burton, David Green, Jason Keller, Kevin Grubb, Todd Bodine, they're all in, Ralph Shaheen. Now keep the RPMs at 4,000, Eli, as they come down the pit straight. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is very excited about the way this race car is handling. They're going to take on four tires. He said the car is a little bit loose, but then it comes around just five. One, Jared. Well, Ralph, same thing for Dick Trickle. His car was a lot looser than he liked on that first set of tires that they put on uh, in the last pit stop. The stuff that they started the race on was great. So they're going to make an air pressure adjustment. No wedge adjustment, just air pressure on the front of strike, front of strike, to drive, back and trickle up. And they got problems on the left front. He loses another spot. But actually, he does get out in third. I thought Jason Kelly was going to beat him out. Uh, but uh, Trickle made this, an air pressure adjustment to try to tighten that race car up. This should be their last stop. 25 cars still on the lead lap. The five-second lead that Earnhardt Jr. enjoyed is gone. And the fans know it. We're going to have a dandy of a finish coming up. Yeah, what I was going to tell you, uh, Ward Burton did beat him out of the pit, so he's now in second. Okay. Uh, trickle. So he lost the position there. What I was looking at was a 93 car was over 93, his line yeah, yeah. by a good bit, and I didn't see an official anywhere, so I guess they got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> this will be a good, good... Well, Jason Keller's in fourth now. That'll be good. That is a good story. Yeah. Rubber out now. All right. Hello. Oh. Hey, guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I told you kids it was real tight. They tried to take a rubber out of the right front. They couldn't get it out. Uh, they... Put the tire on, send him back out. It's 32 seconds. They lost all the track position. I think they're going to bring him back yeah. in to try to get that rubber out. He's hey, coming down. Hey, down. Yeah, that's the reason for the second pit stop. Hey, Glenn. Uh, yeah. Bodine is doing a, quite a job, too. We hadn't mentioned him at all. He's all the way up to fifth. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Todd. Three-time winner here. Yeah. And he's got that ozone thing going for him, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you go there. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. No, no. All right. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Do anyway. we have to? Do we anyway. have to do it? Hold your crabs. Oh, well, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pass on the crabs. Yeah. Look at that. He's got some pretty good donuts on the right side. Yeah, yes, he's sir. been leaning on people. 36 in particular. <laughs> yeah. Feedable. TNN Motorsports live coverage of the MBNA Platinum 200 is being brought to you by Midas. Go safely. Go Midas. And by the Home Depot. TNN Motorsports live coverage of the MBNA Platinum 200 is being brought to you by Midas. Go safely. Go Midas. And by the Home Depot, the official home improvement warehouse of NASCAR. Welcome back. We're a lap away from going green. 
Matt Kenseth has just made another unscheduled pit stop. Glenn, what's going on? Well, you know, the first time as they came in, they tried to take a spring rubber out of the right front. You know, I told you the car was pushing very badly. So they're going to take that spring rubber out and try to loosen it up a little bit. They could not get it out. So Matt had to put the four tires on, go out and come back in. It still took them a very long time to get the spring rubber out. They finally did. So hopefully now he'll have a race car that'll turn where he wants it to. But the problem is he fell all the way back to 25th. Yeah, that, you know, as good as he came out of the pits last time yep. up in fifth place, and he only fell back to 10th, he should have left that car alone. He doesn't have enough laps to get by 25 cars to get back to the front. There you see where some of your favorites are after the stop. Look at Todd Bodine now. He is in fifth, a three-time winner here in only 13 starts. The big loser going from ninth to 17th of those exchanges were Kenny Wallace, or was Kenny Wallace, as that young man who was a fan here at Dover and always comes to the races, kind of helps out and throw in the green flag. Eli Warburton could not get back up to speed there when the green flag come out. He has a problem with the motor on that car. He just wasn't able to accelerate like he wanted to. Now he looks just fine though once he gets the RPMs up. Yeah. Got some kind of intermittent miss in that motor. That one is. your tooth never hurts and you're in the dentist chair. No, it's yeah. like you take your car into the garage. Yeah. It, well, it stalled yesterday. <laughs> One and seven tenths seconds. Dale Earnhardt's lead on Ward Burton, Dick Trickle, Jason Keller, and Todd Bodine. Remember that yellow Stanley car if you're just joining us. Tim Fiedel went a couple of laps down early and has been running well, but still is two laps down in 30th, but he's staying among the race leaders on the track. Neil Jr. kind of reminds me of a movie I saw, baby. What's that? A league of your own. Trouble oh, oh, good Trouble left man hits it, and Joe Bessie right there in the power team car. Caution. Caution on the speedway for the sixth time, lap 151, as Kenseth and Bessie seem to get together. Ernie Irvin was also involved. I see him yep. down in the corner now trying to get off the racetrack, so Ernie there's Irvin was involved also. Kenseth's sitting back up here somewhere. And there's Joe Bessie, the power team entry. Of course, power team having a spectacular week last week, winning the Indianapolis 500 with Kenny Breck and team owner A.J. Foyt. You see Matt Kenseth moving around in the car okay or the hit he's gonna take in the point yeah, yeah. well <laughs> he was the point leader by only 84 on Earnhardt jr oh, right. oh. Bessie broke loose yeah Bessie got up in the, in the marble in there. that white stuff the Ernie Irvin in the 14 there battling to get it back straight there he was just in the wrong place and got collected oh boy mm -hmm. You are. You like that. You like the cue ball on the billiard table. Wow. Just bouncing around. When you restart in 25th place with 50 laps to go, and you got to get yourself back to the front, you're going to get in trouble. Well, cleanup's going to take a bit, so we'll break away with Dale Earnhardt Jr. continuing the lead. It's a great weekend. We're doing fine. How about you? Daddy Wags. We need some fabric from Dover. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Ernie Irvin hit the heck out of that yeah. wall on the inside. Sure did. Only time will tell. Huh? Now, you know what? Earnhardt's got one big problem. What's he got? The 36 car is going to be trying to get back in the... Yeah, but he's two yeah, laps so down. Yeah, yeah but he'll gonna... watch him press. But so watch far, he, he ain't even been able to keep up with him on the takeoff. Well, that's yeah. the deal. But if he does, wow. he's going to press. Terry Labonte's in. Texas. 44 is in. 4 is in. <laughs> Man, <laughs> they're running where? Uh, 19? <laughs> I'll be did, glad uh, when that's done. Did that guy come in on those legs or it was from <laughs> He <birth>? riding a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> riding a chicken. 
Those are the famed blue crabs that gave their lives for the cause here over the weekend. <laughs> oh, the NASCAR family always gathers at some of the noted restaurants here in the Dover and Lipsick area of Delaware. And yeah. Man, you know who taught me how to eat those things? It was Hello. the late Elmo Langley, who was from Maryland. Yeah. And Elmo saw me just massacring a crab one night. He We're said, up. Eli, said, I can't stand to watch that anymore. Here's how you eat those things. And ever since, the level of the Chesapeake hasn't been the same. He it, told me that. He said, you got to take the shell off, Eli. <laughs> yeah. I just wondered if you were still friends after he showed you how to eat one. I tell you, the best thing to get is a crab cake sandwich. Let somebody else get do the all the taste. Yeah. Somebody else does the go. work. <laughs> <laughs> Under caution for the sixth time. Let's ride with Matt Kenson. Man. Oh. You see how quickly Bessie's car jumps? Just though? jump loose, yeah. Now with Ernie. You get that right rear up there. Yes, wiggles a little bit. about as scary as the look. Uh, yeah, I hate that. You know, it's yeah. well, the, more I, the more I see stuff like that, the more I like TV, do, doing TV work, you know? Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Anytime that straightaway starts getting longer, you know you're in trouble. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, remember, with Kenseth uh, caught up in the jam there, we see the swap around. Dale Earnhardt Jr. will apparently take over the NASCAR Bush Series point lead here today. Third is Jeff Green. Then Elton Sawyer and Jason Keller in the points. Of course, Keller is now in fourth place on the racetrack, so uh, this is going to be a dandy day for him, too. Great yep. job. Field's and, uh, getting the one-to-go signal, so uh, we'll be back to it here in a moment. Green's in the top ten. He's ten. Mikey's recovered. He's 13th there. You know, somebody's been pretty quiet, too, is Johnny Benson in 33 car. He's running in eighth right now yeah. and just doing a very nice job in that car. Okay, yeah, I didn't even notice been quietly moving up. Yep. Elton Sawyer is 11th. Dave Blaney now running in the 12th spot. So some of the names we talked about earlier who were mid-pack have begun to rise to the top with 45 miles, 45 laps to go. Glenn Jarrett's down with the infield care center. Well, I was going to talk to Matt Kenseth, but you can see him waving as they go by. <laughs> <laughs> he came out. He's okay. What they found out was they, they had loaded everything up. They thought the car was damaged too badly. They couldn't see it clearly. But now they realize that they, that they can get the car back in. So they're going to rush Matt down to the other end of the speedway. We're down at turn one where the medical center is. Bush Garage area is all the way down between turns three and four. So they're going to take him down there. They're going to try to get him back out. He's the points leader after all. He's going to garner everything he can out of this mess. I can't believe Glenn would try to keep up with it. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. Lap 155 complete. Or as the guy up here used to say, good gravy. You got it. I tell you what, tires are not a problem, fuel's not a problem. The staying in the lead is. Bernard Jr. leading the yellow car feet up two laps down, remember. And Ward Burton just didn't get up to speed quickly. No, he, has, he struggles a little on the restart. Once he gets it wound up, he goes. He did Dale Jr. start mighty, mighty quick on the restart, and he was testing that flag. Jason Keller there on the outside going in the corner there. He's moving quite well. He's taking a good line through there, and Todd goes down just behind him in the 66, doing a great job today. Todd never qualifies that good, or at least he hadn't lately. But, man, he races good. He always comes up to the field and is in the top five or six there every race. And, you know, we talked about Jason Keller. Remember, he won the pole here in 95, led a good bit of the race, has a couple of top five finishes here. So the fact that he's running so well shouldn't really surprise us. No, and he is a very good race car driver, very consistent, and also stays out of trouble. Hey, this because he's got the car he used to win the race at Bristol as we watch Dale Earnhardt Jr. Is there anything to this concrete car deal where you use a car particularly for concrete racetracks? I, I, I frankly think there is. Uh, the cars that are that we run at Bristol and here they're built with a little bit more uh, uh, got a few more roll bars in them they're a little bit stiffer in the chassis which will make them uh, adhere to this concrete a little bit better get rid of some of that flex. There's the leader, there's the lapsed car, and here comes the whole host of guys. Boy, you don't want to look back at this crowd. <laughs> oh, my. That is your 11th place car on 
back. Yeah. All of those guys right there. Yeah. And they swapped that position nine times over there on the back straightaway. That green card, 89, Jeff Fuller down on the bottom there. These guys are swapping, like you say, they're all back and forth, back and forth, sliding around each other. And they're on the lead lap, but 18, Phil Parsons in the 10 car. You've got the 89 and 19 spot, so they're all battling for position with 40 to go. Now Kenny Wallace in 16 with Mike Dillon just ahead of him in the Kingsford car. Mike Walker up there in that plum color car all over the racetrack. He's very, very high in the corner. I don't think the car really is getting the grip he wants in the corner. No, he tries to run down low, but he, does. he slows him down. Looks like he just got the car pushing too much. He's got to run high and free it up and get it up off the corner. But he loses a lot of time doing that because it once like gets in there a little too hot and pushes way up on him. Just as we say that, he starts running the low line. <laughs> well, he's listening to us. I told him I'd tell him what to do if he just listened to me. <laughs> 13, that white car, Whelan sponsorship, that's Ted Christopher. First time here, he's in 24th position. And that may not sound like a great accomplishment for the first time here on the lead lap in 24th position. That's a good Yoli day for us right here. Let's tell everybody why we're not talking about Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's checked out. He's got about a 15 car left lead right now, or half a turn on the second place car, Ward Burton holding on very well, but back here is the war. Tom yeah. Bodine and David Green getting around Jason Keller, so not a good uh, trip down the back stretch for Keller. Now he pushed up off the two, and we did open the door, and they went through. And he's got more problems just behind him. Kevin Grubb there has been fast all day long. Keller's now in sixth, Grubb is seventh. Grubb is coming, I think he's going to take that spot. Trouble being straight away, that is Jeff Fuller. Oh. Oh, hard the left. white lightning wall. We heard a big boom just as he went by, which normally is indicative of a tire that was cut down. And caution, lap number 165. You see Fuller moving around in the race car. Wow, that was a hard lift. One lap has been gotten back by that man. Tim Fedewa, he's been good. At, he's been really good since that early uh, uh, problem he had, and he's been really good. He's able to make up a lap. Also, Dale Earnhardt Jr., when he realized there was a caution, he checked up right then. He did not have to race Fedewa, who's two laps down, so he let him get a lap back. We'll take a couple of looks at what happened as Jeff Fuller checks out his race car. He's underneath Phil Parsons there. Oh, yeah, ah. they touch. Yeah. Ow. Oh, man. And that looks bad. Now watch when he turns around and heads down into the inside wall here again. And you know what it was? That big boom I heard was him actually hitting the wall the first oh, time. Oh, Phil bounced. Yeah, see, Phil bounced off the wall. Oh, it broke the, the wall. wall yeah. yeah, I saw dirt fly on the back side of the wall, so it broke the wall somehow. What started that was Phil Parsons hit the outside wall, bounced in uh, to Fuller's car, which shot him into that inside wall. Oh, and the uh, NASCAR officials checking out the wall you see right there wow that's even that ain't, look at this Daryl yep a lot of work there that's the uh, well that was the MBNA sponsorship <laughs> painted there till Fuller obliterated it and then NASCAR is going to check that wall very carefully to make sure its integrity is not uh, terribly damaged Meanwhile, Matt Kenseth is still in the garage now at the other end of the racetrack. Uh, let's hear from him. Well, Eli, he has made it back to his car where the crew is working feverishly to get him back in the race. Matt, the points lead has now slipped away, but the crew is working hard on the car. How bad is it? I haven't looked at it yet, but it hit awfully hard. Um, <laughs> it made some mistakes last couple weeks. Last week we got lucky, this week we didn't. We just uh, really missed the setup by a long ways. We never had the car right all weekend and, uh, you know, tried to make some adjustments and just... Uh, couldn't get him done in time. Got his way back in the pack, and then uh, Joe Bessie just lost control in front of me and didn't have nowhere to go, so we're just going to get out of here with a real bad finish, but we'll be back real strong next week. Eli? Next week is South Boston, Virginia, right here on TNN Motorsports. There you see the wall. Watch this again, Darrell. Yeah, as he watched the blue car on the outside here, that's Phil. He bounces off the wall, and when he does, it just, man, they're running wide open right there. They're running 150 miles an hour right there, and when he hit... Uh, Fuller's car, I mean, it took it for a ride. And you know, you know how fast you guys are going as a spectator, but when a car goes sideways, oh. you really appreciate the speed here at Dover Downs. 
We're back in a moment. No, he's yeah. running wide open right there. He don't know if he's going to get hit. Phil bounced off. He's down there working on his car. Yep. He just shot over into him. Well, the right side's flat on it, so yep. he really packed the wall. You can see uh, they had a better shot of it looking back down the racetrack. You can see how hard Phil hits the wall and bounces out. Now, that's called real time, but in real life, it's called no time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's trying to push it back together. <laughs> yeah, let's see. How many miles we got to go here? 30 miles. I don't... They look like they're going to try to repair it. They're going to try and push the wall. That wall's all right. Put a car up against it. Uh-oh. Put this lane's... <laughs> prop a couple tires up against it. It'll be all right. Yeah, all right. They'll fix it. They did once before. I mean... What? Drivers, race teams, and race fans, the 99 June Simpson Racing Catalog is now available. For more information, call 1-800-71-RACE or visit the Simpson website at simpsonraceproducts.com and join Team Simpson today. Mack trucks are furnished by Clement Chevy Mack Sales. For all Drivers, race teams, and race fans. The 99 June Simpson Racing Catalog is now available. For more information, call 1-800-71-RACE or visit the Simpson website at simpsonraceproducts.com and join Team Simpson today. Mack trucks are furnished by Clement Chevy Mack Sales. For all your truck and tractor needs, call Clement at 1-800-369-MACK. Winnebago Industries, the official motorhome of BNN Motorsports. For information on Winnebago Industries products for the Winnebago Motorsports team, call 1-800-643-4892. Right. Well, they are going to work to make sure the wall has maintained full integrity here at Dover. And as a result, they are going to, I understand, put a red flag out here to uh, let the crews continue. We are at lap 168 of 200. So there's going to be uh, a red flag here. You see the field coming to a stop on the apron of the racetrack. That is at the exit of turn number four. Cars cannot be worked on if you're not familiar with NASCAR rules, whether it's the Winston Cup, Bush Series, or any of the NASCAR Touring Series. When there is a red flag out, you cannot do any work on the car. So anyone anywhere on the premises that was uh, trying to repair damage, they just have to wait. And uh, Darrell, obviously, right here, the, the number one concern is if somebody else happened to hit the wall at that speed at the same spot, you wanted to make sure the wall was going to hold up. Yeah, well, that's the protection for the pit crews, you know, and you sure don't want anybody to hit that thing. The chances that happen are slim and none, but if it did happen to happen, sure. uh, everybody would feel bad about it. So, But you know one thing I've never understood? They stop the race and give it a red flag. Why don't you bring the, why don't you bring the cars in and work on them? I mean, golly, they're just sitting there. Nobody, yeah, you know, come in, work on them. Well, I'll tell you what. Make a better while, race. While we talk to Jeff Fuller, you can go next door and talk with these guys here from <laughs> no, the car. Well, they're, they're, they're over there now shaking their head like, what are you talking about? But, you know, it'd be kind of neat. And let them come in and work on them. Jeff Fuller just came out of the care center. Uh, obviously, Jeff's standing here. He's okay. And, Daryl, I think we're going to get a whole lot smarter answer out of Jeff than what we just went through there. Yeah. Jeff, I know <laughs> how intense a, a, a competitor you are, and you had a, looked like a pretty good car, but... Man, you were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, we certainly were, and that, see, that story seems to be getting old. Um, you know, the Heritage Consumer Products Chevrolet, we, the last stop, we were we were good. Figured we'd get a good top ten out of that. Kyle was running good. The, the guys did a good job in the pits, and I got by Phil, and, you know, trying to be a gentleman, got underneath him, stayed out of the gas, made sure the car was straight, just gave him plenty of room, and I don't know what happened coming off the corner or if he got into it too quick and the back end jumped out or what, but... I just, you know, this this year, and I, I just can't believe the luck that we've been having. With my luck, they'll probably send me a bill to fix the wall out there. 
<laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, but we're certainly glad you're okay, and uh, hopefully you have better luck next week, buddy. Thanks a lot. That is the Fuller family dry sense of humor, and obviously uh, Jeff hasn't seen the video because Phil just bounced off the wall and didn't want to do that either. No, so, uh, no. Uh, he'll he'll get a chance to take a look, see, but. Uh, Carl Simmons and other NASCAR officials working on the repairs while our crew in the tape room works on bringing you the pictures. All I see him doing is pulling back though. I haven't yeah, seen a welder. I haven't seen the first welder. Straighten it up a little bit. There is a welder on that truck. I haven't seen anybody. You know, that's the one thing that people don't understand is the driver does not see everything that happens. Oh, no. Yeah. You're no. down there digging off that corner, and you're looking down the straightaway. You're not looking no. at the car beside of you. You have tunnel vision. I mean, you know, you got a full-face helmet on. You, you only see what you see straight ahead. That's why you have a spotter. Yeah, a spotter should have told him what Yeah, happened. a spotter should have said, hey, he bounced off the wall, got into it. Maybe his radio was not loose. Maybe. Yeah, I think know. right at that time, Maybe. I think everything knocked loose. Yeah. I've yeah. got out to answer that phone. I don't like the looks yeah, of uh, Dover Air Force Base. I don't like the looks of uh, Todd Bodine's car. I swear it looks like he's got his nose jammed into the pavement. It does. There. It looks Doesn't like it the front valence is yeah. jammed in. I don't know about that. I know why. I know why he's like it. I mean, they put him on an angle like this so if it won't start, it'll roll off and get it cranked up. Yeah, Jump. but I'd be way up on the but track. I don't, I, it almost looks like they don't look good. What do you say? C5A? Yeah, those big things. Yeah, yeah. C5, C5A. What, what, is there one in the area? No, well, they're showing us the Dover oh. Air Force Base oh. here. <laughs> no, it's cold. It's cold so cold. Over the road transit for this broadcast provided by Rider Transportation Services. The cars remain parked under the red flag. A repair of the wall is underway here at the Monster Mile. Chance for us to remind you to swing on by, race in, if you will, to the all-new and official store of NASCAR. NASCAR Thunder. Chances are there is a store near you. Just give that number a ring, the 615-883-7000 phone number. They'll give you all the information you need as to the nearest NASCAR Thunder store to your hometown. Under the red flag, there's a great look from the helicopter at uh, Dover Air Force Base, just up Highway 13 from where we sit. Literally a uh, five-mile drive, if that much. Those are the famed C-5As that uh, make their home here at o Dover Air Force Base. Yeah, they took us out there one time and let us go up in these airplanes, and you wouldn't believe how high off the ground you are in the cockpit of that thing. I mean, it's like four stories high there just where the cockpit's at. I thought that was how all these race teams got to the race this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't understand. No. Yours is being repaired. Yeah, mine's in the, yeah. Mine's in the <laughs> hangar. <laughs> highway 13 in the foreground, and there's Highway yeah. 1. What we're concerned about is Bodine put the car on that bank like that to restart it, but I think he might have overdone it there. It looks like the front valence is digging in the asphalt there. I hope it don't damage that thing when he lets the brake off yeah, there. You can see it's right on the bottom there. Am I getting better at that, buddy? Let me try you that. You are one getting more. good, man. That's hard to do. <laughs> That's, that place right there. Of course, he's had a back to front kind of routine this year, uh, Todd has. Yeah. See right there? Yeah. Interesting. Remember Bristol? Started 38th, finished 5th. New Hampshire started 38th, finished 9th. Richmond started 37th, finished 4th. That's him right there. Charlotte finished 40th, <laughs> <laughs> finished 9th. 
No more toys. You're not, you're no not, more toys for this man. You're not right. <laughs> you're not right. He don't know his bet, I guarantee you on that. Let me see if I can put a little. Wait a minute. There's a little mustache. Uh, one. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Darrell Walter, Buddy Baker. We've got Glenn Jarrett, Ralph Shaheen on board here today. Tomorrow, of course, we'll be joined as well by Steve Burns and Dr. Dick Bergren for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series MBNA Platinum 400. There's Tony Urey Sr., Crew chiefing for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Just waiting for this uh, wall repair to take place. And Ralph, the man looks content. I guess you are if you know you got yourself a car that can win. Yep, that's exactly right, Eli. And if they hold on, Tony Uri, you'll take over the points lead as well here today. How good is the car for the run to the finish today? Well, our car is just as good as it was uh, before we stopped. So, but it uh, looks like Ward made an improvement on his. So his car was good the first run, and it looked like it went away the second run. So... I don't know what they did to it, whether they helped it or what, but it looked like he was pretty good right there to start with. 30 laps go, 30 laps in the other run, he fell off, so we got 32 to go, so hopefully we can hold him off and get enough lead there so we can win this race. We need to win one. We've been trying to win a race all year long, and we ain't been successful at it. We're going to try it today. Will this be uh, a car that's better on old tires for the run to the finish here? Yeah, our car's real good on old tires. Uh, that's one thing we've worked on. We got beat last year a couple of times because we couldn't run on old tires. We've worked hard to get our car to where we'll work on old tires. And we got we got beat last week because we run good on old tires and didn't run good on new tires. So uh, hopefully that won't happen today. Glenn Jarrett. Hey, thanks, Ralph. We're down here in the pits with uh, Mr. Excitement there, Jimmy Spencer, <laughs> <laughs> who owns this car. And you were just telling me that it's going to be kind of tough to beat that three car. It really is. I'll tell you, Glenn, uh, he's about 1,500 a lot quicker than us, and uh, we adjusted on our car, and we needed a long run, so hopefully we can get back and going again. And uh, the O2 is holding us up a little bit on the start. I guess he's having some problems, but, you know, we're having a good day, and, and that's what the Schneider team needs right now more than anything. We've had a pretty tough year, and uh, you know, Dick's doing a great job starting on the pole. And uh, I wish the race was over in a way, and we took a top-five finish home because uh, the guys really need it more than anything right now. And... Uh, you know, uh, I think Dick's done a great job for us, but uh, we've had a lot of tough luck, and there's still a lot of laps left, and hopefully nothing happens the rest of the day. Well, I hope not either. Now, remember, this is Mr. Excitement. When I first came up here, folks, let me show you what he was really excited about. They're the very first team pitting down at the end of pit road. Walk over here with me, Brad. Spencer was really mad because the uh, blower blowing the speedy drive came by and blew stuff all over his pit equipment. So he was really hot. <laughs> but other than that, they did make an adjustment on the car. The crew chief, Bryant Schaefer, said that uh, it went from being too loose to too tight. So they're going to have their hands full if they're going to beat the three. Well, Dick's running third right now, and uh, best he's finished this year was 11th three different times so he's certainly destined to his best win of the year that's the wall that they are replacing if you're just tuning in or actually repairing not replacing uh, what happened was this accident phil parsons bounces off the wall into jeff fuller and fuller dismantles a piece of the wall damn right look there at that, look at that wall move right there when he hit that dirt flying on the back side there he goes around and then hits the wall again as he goes down the Watch when he comes back down. This is a hard lick when he starts straight head on into the inside wall. Bam. Ooh. Man, it just stopped. Here it is again. Bill bounces off the wall. Touches right there, and there's yeah. nothing that anyone could blame anybody for there. Nah. Bill was trying to come off the corner, got a little close to the wall, made contact, and he shot him right over in the fuller. Yep. So because of that hit, we are under the red flag as uh, NASCAR officials and track cleanup crews are just pushing and shoving on that wall to make sure. Now they're welding it, so uh, we should be closing in on a restart shortly. 32 laps to go. Yeah. Less right. than 10. Okay. You know, I was just looking at Spencer, how, how he wants just a good finish and all i think about it. Yes, i brought him did. into this sport he was never worried about my stuff like and that and he doesn't <laughs> so well <laughs> worry about <laughs> Travis's like, like it either yeah. Platinum he never worried about Travis. brought to you by napa auto parts hey dw napa, napa, you draw we you draw america like your brother does? no i can't do that uh, <laughs> no, no no you see how i draw yeah i don't think i'd be wanting to call it doing that anyway no i don't think he realized he didn't realize he was going in all the sweeps yeah and they're, well, 
Get well, Mom. Who is that? Somebody on Snyder team on yeah, the trickles. trickles guys. I don't know any of them. But I bet they're from up. Oh, right. they, who is she? Do we know the name? Uh, Mr. Goodyear. Let's see. Um, no. Man, I can't. It's a typical Spencer. He wouldn't. You can't put a name on a shirt. He might have to give it to somebody else. TNN Motorsports live coverage of the MBNA Platinum 200 is being brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Napa, we keep America running. And by the motor oil that provides maximum protection. Castrol GTX. Drive hard. Hey folks, be sure to tune in just prior to our race telecast tomorrow for a special half hour edition of race day live on TNN at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. And for the West Coast viewers, you folks will be receiving a special post-race edition of race day live on TNN at 3 o'clock Pacific time tomorrow afternoon. So keep it right here on TNN all day long tomorrow for racing coverage from the studio and from right here at the racetrack. Hey, coming up later today, Roller Jam. The Big Apple meets the Lone Star State as the enforcers take on the Rustlers. See who survives this afternoon, 5 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, right here on TNN. There's another satisfied viewer. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Glenn put her right to sleep. <laughs> oh, Lord. The cleanup you see wrapping up the guy in the yellow shirt, Melvin Joseph, the patriarch of this Dover Downs International Speedway. He really is. I mean, he runs this place with an iron fist. He's, uh, he is the guy that uh, used to put the sealer on the track that we all dreaded, and now he's concreted it. Yeah, and everybody's moving away, so they're satisfied the wall is uh, ready to go back under green here. So you can see where they welded the top of the wall. It is a steel wall. So those repairs complete. We'll be racing in a moment. Ralph Shaheen has another visitor. That's Tommy Baldwin again. Tommy, is the engine of the car that Ward Burton's driving getting better, getting worse? What's the story? No, nah, it's pretty much staying about the same right now. Uh, I think we pretty much narrowed down. It's a, a bad exhaust leak, and with these 9-to-1 engines and these Bush cars, it just kills all the torque. So we don't have much torque coming off, you know, much power coming off the corner right now, and it takes a couple of laps to get, get going. But uh, once we get going, I think, you know, we might be able to give that three car a little run for the money uh, in the end. Uh, hopefully it goes green the whole way, but... Uh, you know, I got to thank everybody back at the shop and back in the motor shop. Uh, this Siemens Pontiac has been going good all day. I got to tell you guys, the, the thing about crew chiefs, not only do they control the team, but they also control the volume and the controller on the TV. First time we came over here and talked to Tommy, the, the volume was up on the TV, and it was throwing him off. It was reverberating in the background. He could hear himself. This time we come over to do the interview, the first thing he does is he makes all the guys over here have all gathered around to watch the interview with Tommy, makes them all turn it down so he doesn't hear himself. Glenn? <laughs> Thanks, Ralph. And the third thing he did was to verify what Darrell Walter said about 100 laps ago when we first reported on that. I heard D.W. say, I bet he's got an exhaust leak. Way to go, D.W. We're looking at Terry Shirley right now. He's the crew chief for Kevin Grubb. We started on the outside pole. And uh, I tell you what, for a young man, you've had a, a young driver out there with not a lot of experience, Terry. You've had a pretty good day. Yeah, yeah, he makes it pretty rough on, a, on an older crew chief. But, uh, hey, Kevin's doing a good job. The guys here, the whole Timberwolf team's done really good in the pits today. A little bit tight, done some adjusting here and there, trying to chase it. It's going to be like a trophy dash here in a minute, I believe. Okay, thanks a lot. Best of luck to you guys for the rest of the day. And the cars are rolling again. We're going to go racing, guys. Now we're probably going to get a couple of laps to get everybody ready to roll here. Then we'll be throwing the green flags. We're going to break away quickly. Then head to the finish of the MBNA Platinum 200.
Boy, I used to hate this worse than anything. When you sit like that. Yep. Really? Yep. Well, it's two or three. Well, well, it's just you have a rhythm that you're already in. And like Earnhardt Jr., I mean, everything was going his way. And now everything is, uh, you stopped. The valves were left open. Cold air was rushing in. Even though it's a warm day, cold air is running into the motor. You just hope it don't crinkle a valve or, or right. create a problem. There's a lot of things that can happen. Probably the, and one of the other things, buddy, is the tires. It's, we, we do what we call cycles on the tires. Right. All right. And those now tires have gotten hot. Let Daryl and Buddy talk about this uh, red flag a little bit. Yeah. They're saying some very interesting stuff. Yeah. It's only part of what we know, but <laughs> can't uh, tell them everything. I do want to let Daryl and Buddy expound on the red flag a bit. Expound. Right. It'll be two when they get here. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll cut mine down some. Then. Oh, look at Matt. He's in a super modified now. So Kent oh, back. Yeah, I got a good idea. NASCAR will say, bring that back to Welcome back, everybody. Live at Dover Downs. A couple of laps away from going back to work after a 16-minute red flag period for the damage to the wall what do you guys you as racers what do you guys think about when you're sitting out there buddy and you got a 16 minute intermission uh, i mean what goes through your mind well the first thing you hope you don't do is you're already in a rhythm you have the racetrack dialed in everything's working for you and and daryl has some interesting things to talk about tires and different things but the first thing with me i shut a motor off it's running extremely hot all of a sudden cool air starts going through the exhaust pipe. Even on a hot in, day yeah, like this. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. up into the valve system. And you hope it don't crinkle the valve. There's a lot of things that can happen under a red flag. Yeah, and then the other thing is uh, the tires. I mean, we, 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 what we call cycle the tires. When you put them on brand new, that's when they're their best. You go out, you get them real, real hot, 230 degrees, 240 degrees. Then you come in and they set in the garage. The tires cool back down. And they tire, they'll actually get harder. They'll actually uh, cure out a little bit more, that rubber wheel, and then the car doesn't act the same the next time you go out on them. So that's, that's a number of things. I think the other thing is you've got time to talk to your pit crew, too. And uh, you can decide if you want to make some changes or even if you want to pit or not or discuss some things you might do differently in this last 30 laps. We're about a lap and a half away from going green. Work on the Stanton Barrett Channel Lock Chevrolet. There's the starting grid for tomorrow's MBNA Platinum 400. Bobby Labonte, third race in a row. He's won the pole, if you count, the Winston, then the 600 last week, and now here. Elliot Sadler with a great uh, qualifying effort. Oh, Jerry Nadeau did well. The top 32, folks, as you watch this, the top 32 drivers all broke the old track record. That's I can't remember that happening uh, like that anywhere. Well, well, we've been fast everywhere we've been this year. I mean, with the air, with the downforce we have in the cars right now, we've set track records almost everywhere we've been. Bristol comes to mind. Martinsville comes to mind. A lot of places we've been extremely fast. Well, and they've ground on the racetrack, and it's so much smoother now. As you were saying, the stuff that worked last race here didn't even work now because the car didn't have the same bumps to run over. Yeah, and not only that, they did run a tire test here. Kyle Petty tested tires here a couple, three weeks ago, and they don't. They always say we didn't do anything to the tires, but there has to be a little something different about the tires. It's isn't just grinding on the racetrack to pick up that much speed. Ralph, how about tires in this race now as we near the finish? Well, tires in this race, Eli, seem to be okay. Most of the teams are going to go the distance here, or at least going to try to. But Goodyear is posted a note to all the Winston Cup teams. Of course, happy hour comes up after the Bush race today. Goodyear has asked, and NASCAR has approved an extra half hour added to the happy hour session today. They are encouraging the teams to go out and stuff tires for tomorrow. With the increased speed, of course, tire temperatures will go up. And one of the ways that you can lower tire temperatures about 10 to 15 degrees is to stuff the tires in. So Goodyear has encouraged teams to go out and stuff some tires in for tomorrow's race. So if you run a few miles on them and let them cool down, yeah. it really... Well, yeah. he, he hit on it just a while ago. That's a cycle. You yeah. run it through a cycle, it makes the compound a little bit harder, a little less easy to, to yeah. cook. So tires it, are uh, more forgiving if, they, if you run them a lap or two and knock that dew off of them and let them cure out a little bit more. 
Meanwhile, we're set to see if everybody can continue doing what they've been doing as we're getting set to go green here in the final laps of the MBNA Platinum 200. The three is Dale Earnhardt Jr. He is the race leader. Man, slow start. He's keeping him way down. Where they get those good restarts? He's taking off and low. Everybody else in second. Oh boy, there you go. Well, I tell you, Warren Burton had a lot to do with that slow start where he could accelerate up. We do know that Warren Burton has a problem with getting up to speed. Yeah, well, Dale knows that too, and I'm sure the crew said, you know, he's slugging on the restart right down as slow as he can. Nothing wrong with that. Good strategy. Take advantage of the competition. The weakness of the competition. Trouble turn two as Dale Earnhardt takes the caution again. One car has tagged the wall in turn number two and there you have further problems here on the main straightaway randy, LaJoy. randy LaJoy. lajoy so randy lajoy directly here in front of the main straightaway grandstand and matt kenseth, and matt again. kenseth again who had just come back 18 laps down that is kenseth on board he was driving what looked to be a modified you know that look when they peel off sheet metal and so on well kenseth had just come out 18 laps down spun out of turn number two and ends up there against the wall. Then unrelated, Randy LaJoy here on the main straightaway. And again, we're under caution for the eighth time. Well, I'm a firm believer, Eli, and I, and I know no disrespect to Ken, but he's a good kid. But I don't think NASCAR will let a car go back on the racetrack unless they got all their body parts. A car running around out here with a front end knocked off and all, it just doesn't look good. There you see LaJoy already sideways. Whoa don't know if there was uh, any help there from Krogh or not. Jeff Krogh was right behind him or alongside, but in any event, that was the second of the incidents that happened at different ends of the racetrack. Yeah, you can see the roof flap already employed there to keep the car down, so he was backwards quite a ways there. Randy LaJoy started off so well in Daytona winning this year with this team, and since then they have had just a terrible year they've had so many things happen to that car that you normally don't expect with randy lajoy but i talked to randy and he said one thing about this crowd versus maybe some other places he's been they don't blame him so randy lajoy going to the garage area actually to pit road is where he'll stop if he has any brakes to get blown down let's go on board now with matt kenship or will this be with lajoy this will be with randy lajoy oh. He Matt clearly Kenseth. had a right front Kenseth. tire flat. Yeah. He was right the first time. Matt Kenseth, as he came off of turn number two. He did, that's what you call being sure you killed that car. You could see him turn the steering wheel all the way to the left, yeah. and it was going straight to the wall. Right front was flat way before he got to the wall. It's one of the biggest fears you have when you go back out in a car that's been in a wreck is, you know, did they get everything tight? Did they get all the tires where they don't rub? Uh, man, it's a tough place to be. And when you're trying to protect a point lead, tough place to be. But well, you know what? You learn from things like that. Yep. Dale Earnhardt Jr. continues to lead with 25 laps to go, trying to close in on his first win of the 1999 season. I'll tell you what, that was a lick and a half. I have no oh. idea which video he was oh, seeing. Oh, he does. Yeah, I mean, he was gassing. Once offer. you turn over two inches, you're done anyhow. A monster. Ooh, that's a flat tire. Bam, bam, bam. Tony Rosa. Whoa. Bam. Dave Griffin. Why don't you crank that thing up and drive it down on the apron? I, I know. Thought, I, I think, think he right thought rear. he was. <laughs> he was going to go to the car driving in the garage. Look at the right rear saw. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they were full of Whoa. Yo. Casey. And that air barrier. Whoa. Chain Hall. <laughs> this will be uh, Jeff. Oh. Oh, bam. Bessie and. Oh, uh, Bessie. Yeah. Bill Park. That was the. Uh, Man, that's hard. That was just, God, that was hard. you know, everybody says, 
that starting in the back is not a bad deal. If you have a great car, well, that's not true. Sure. <laughs> Any time you start the back, you can call it up with a match that on the hill. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's like saying Russian roulette ain't a bad deal. You only got one bullet. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. But you're next. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or, no. have I fired six or have I fired five? Green flag in the air. The restart here at Dover Downs. Lap 177 complete. We're now on lap 178. There you see the scramble for second spot on back. Already in that second behind the leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now the last thing Ward Burton needs is these restarts. I mean, he's just killing him to get going. Once he gets going, he's okay, though. See, Todd Bodine on the outside there coming around trying. He's in second place right now. Or, or working on, yeah, he's working on on moving in the second. Yeah, he's got to get up there and get after Ward. Ward is okay once he gets off these restarts, but uh, he's slow to get rolling. Randy LaJoy has continued on the racetrack. After that hit in the wall earlier, that brought him to a stop on the main straightaway. There he is at red and white number one on the low side of the racetrack. Earnhardt Jr., Ward Burton, Todd Bodine, Dick Trickle, David Green, that man, Mike McLaughlin, back in 29th spot, seven laps down. Not a vintage day again for that Gould Pump team. Boy, oh boy, Ward boy, Burton's oh boy. car, when he comes by here, sounds like a pea thrasher, but I tell you what, he's picking them up and putting them down. If anything, he may be closing ground on Earnhardt Jr. just a little bit. But he is closing up on him, and I tell you what, the, get, the distance, the lead that Dale Jr. has, he gets on the restart. Uh, once they get green and get going, uh, Ward seems to me like as fast as maybe a tick faster. Probably a silly question, but is there ever a circumstance where you don't want to have all the power available to you so you don't overpower a racetrack? I think maybe some of the smaller racetracks uh, that would be possible, but here uh, in a good hand, oh, we got trouble on the back. Trouble back straight away, turn three. There you see Ted Christopher, the Bush North and Featherlight Modified Tour driver. And if I'm not mistaken, he and Dave Blaney got together going down into turn three. I know it was a black car. Somebody was trying to get by somebody. I couldn't tell who it was. So Ted Christopher, first Too time here, has stayed out of trouble. He was running 25th, but now Caution is on the speedway again at lap 183, ninth time. See the window net come down. That signals to the safety crew that I'm okay. The driver doesn't uh, drop that net. They know to hustle on out there. The best thing that could happen to Ward is if he got a single foul restart. Well, they do that in the 10 laps, right? Right, 10 laps. We're Eli, out with 18 to while go. we're looking at this car, you, that net right there on the left side of the driver, right on the, that keeps your head from getting back into this bar here. That net right there is probably one of the best things you can have in a race car, I think, to save you when you hit the wall on the driver's side. Yeah, I can remember the first time I used one, it gave me from getting hurt. The guy was trying to hit me with a jack handle. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens here. The 13 is for Christopher. That. You got Johnny Benson, who was outside, and Elton Sawyer, the 98, behind him. Well, it was Johnny oh, Benson. Oh, Johnny Benson. Oh, boy. Now, whether Ted came in on him or Benson came no, up. No, no, no. I just looked up and saw the 93 going by, but that's, that's why we have replays. Yeah. So, our ninth caution, you see right there, we're one, we're one away from tying. A record that you hate to ever tie or break. Yeah, and again, I, I, Ward Burton's got to be just going yeah. crazy because he, he's losing all that ground on those restarts. And Dale Jr. is dragging them around here on the restart, so he's got the, he's got it all figured out. Cleanup continues, 17, 17 laps from the finish. We're live at Dover Downs International Speedway. Back in a moment. I looked over and that car looked like a black car. Yeah, with the sun shining yeah. off it, it's easy. 
But that's why, like I say, we have replays. I'm watching this. I'm not watching the racetrack. So. Well, Christopher goes to the house. Yeah, too bad. Yeah, he did well. Yeah, he was he was having a respectable day. I don't know how he and Benson got together though. Up, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Good grief, where's he at? He got a section all to himself. That reminds me of the. You ever hear him say, "Work like a dog"? I've yeah. never seen my dog do anything but eat. Hmm. Depends on what kind of dog you got, I guess. Yeah, uh -huh. yours is real active, right? I got a border collie. Yeah. Works he writes hard. letters, runs a copy machine. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Still under caution here at Dover Downs International Speedway in Delaware. We have been under caution uh, extensively today. This is the ninth caution period of the afternoon. Plus, we had a red flag for 16 minutes. What do we take you back in this day at the Monster Mile? Lap number two is when things began. Tony Roper, first time to Dover, first time to find the wall. And a host of other guys got caught up in the mess. Lap number 30, Steve Grissom found the wall at turn number four. The Alabama driver was able to drive away to the garage. Despite the flames, he was fine. Then at lap number 100, Ed Barrier, Casey Atwood, they get together off turn number four. But that was a prelude to Shane Hall at lap 145, who brought out what at the time was our fifth function of the day. Lap 151. Bessie, Bobbles, Kenson, and Ernie Irvin had nowhere to go. Lap 166 when Phil Parsons hit Jeff Fuller. Fuller tags the wall. And that brought about that 16-minute delay to repair the wall. And just moments ago, lap 183, Ted Christopher, 13 car. Johnny Benson, the 33. Caution, lap 183 for the ninth time and that has brought you up to speed as we are a half lap away from going green with Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to finally put these 15 laps that remain in the books. If he does, it'll be his first win of the year. He has just clinched the five bonus points for leading the most laps here today. That's the second time he has led the most laps in a race this year. He did the same back at uh, the California Speedway in Fontana earlier. Well, you can see just how soft those the springs and all in the cars are. When they weave them back and forth to travel, there was like three inches on the left side of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car. Let's see if Ward can figure out how to get up here and get after him on this race car. Now, you can see the difference right there. Yeah. And that, if you watch that gap, that's how much difference is there. Ward is behind him. Once he gets up to speed, and the speed walk gets right in there, too. And the 66 top Bodine just desperately wants to grab second. Yeah, they're pretty side by side going down into turn three. Bodine looks like he has a better line in the corner. Yeah, Ward's already going to try to work back under him. Todd's got second. Remember, folks, that yellow 36 is not on the lead lap. Tim Fedewa is a lap down. That orange number five, though, Dick Trickle, he is in fourth. Trying to hang with Todd Bodine and Ward Burton. Well, there's a bunch of cars all lined up behind them there. Boy, that's going to be a snarling mess. I tell you, guys done a great job today. Elton Sawyer, he's up there in seventh place now, and he's been having a good day. We haven't said a word about him. There's Dave Blaney, the 93, running in 10th. Behind him is Kenny Irwin, running in 11th. In car number 11. Johnny Benson in the 33, just behind them. He was involved in that little skirmish on the back straightaway, but seems to be okay. Look at this. Look at Dick, Dick Trickle. Trickle. He's in the five, trying to grab oh. the spot away from Todd Bodine. A little contact there as they started off the corner, but not enough to make him back off. The 41, David Green, will come down low and grab the spot and bring the 37 of Grove along with him. Boy, Trickle is out there in, in a dangerous situation. Those cars getting under him like that. Coming to the line for 10 laps to go. 
for a ward. He's paddling as hard as she'll go, but I don't think he's got enough to catch up. David Green in 32 doing a nice job today. Ralph David Green's doing a super job. Eli, coming into today, David Green's best finish was the seventh at Darlington. Right now, he's currently running fourth. Yeah, you know, he's still on pole with Charlotte with that car, and he's run awfully well here today, so uh, that's a mighty fine ride for him. People ask me all the time, why do the guys that run at Nashville when they're learning drives take to these speedways so much? And I said, Nashville has characteristics of just about every Everywhere. racetrack now, you run. I tell you the other thing too, it's a consistent weekly program that's been there for 50 years. And not only that, the best competition in the country comes there and races all the time. You saw David Green grand third spot away. There you see Mike Dillon in the 59, the 64, Jeffrey Bodine, the 25, Kenny Wallace, that is 13th, 14th, and 15th. And Kenny's going to grab a couple of spots in that 25 car. Boy, I tell you, a lot of guys are taking liberties with each other right now. Woo, there's some pushing and shoving going on. <laughs> now, down here, final seven miles. Yeah. Man, the dress rehearsal's over. This yep. is for real now. The lead is one and two ten seconds. Dale Earnhardt's pulled away from Ward Burton. That's why we're showing you all these other battles right now. Because Dale's got clear racetrack and a second and a half advantage. If you look back at Jeffrey Bodine, here comes Jason Keller underneath the Sawyer car as they go through the middle of the corner. Dave Blaney in the 93. That's for eighth place. As it'll be five laps to go the next time they get back to the stripe. You know, Elton drives a Ford. It's one of, one of the only two or three Fords that run in the, in the Bush Series every week. And there's only been one Ford victory ever in a Bush Series race here at Dover when Mark Martin won many years ago. Looking at Earnhardt going through the corner here just behind him, I believe that Jeff Burton, or Ward Burton, is closing in He's just getting, a little bit. It's nine-tenths of a second. He's catching, but he just don't have... If he could have just done something about those restarts, I believe he could race them real hard. But he's sputtering on him on the restart, and it was just it took away... He deal that big advantage, and he couldn't make it up. And there's that battle for eighth, ninth, and tenth. Oh, Black Lady and wow. Al Sawyer and Jason <laughs> Keller. Wow. Boy, he lifted... The other thing, Blaney's a sprint car driver, because he lifted him up off the ground. He was spinning the rear tires. That's called the old chrome horn there. He gave him a little reminder. I imagine when he passed him, they might have rubbed just a little bit. There goes Kevin Grubb now for sixth. He's in the 37, trying to beat Jeff Green of a punch in the 32. When you see those cars, any of these cars come off of either two or four side by side, you've got to hold your breath. So all it takes is a little wiggle, as we saw earlier. And the guy on the outside bumps the wall, and he slams into the guy on the inside. So Grubb grabs the spot. Green and Blaney settle back in. Up front, it's still nine-tenths of a second. Dale Earnhardt, Jr. Back to Ward Burton. There you see the separation between the two. Ward is closing down a little bit every lap, but he's just going to run out of time. Reminds me of watching one of the carts where the no donkey's trying to get the carrot, but he can't reach far enough. Yeah. Right now, not calling Ward Burton a donkey by any means, but I tell you, it's just right out there, but he can't get it. you got to give him a... Ward's done a great job with that car, though. With the problems they've had, and he's still running second. And I'll tell you, he's done a great job. White flag, Dale Earnhardt, Jr., hasn't won a NASCAR Bush Series since last October at the Gateway International Raceway outside of St. Louis some 18 races ago. But he's going to win here today. First win of the year, eighth of his career. Dale oh, no. Jr. No. wins with a scramble <laughs> behind them wow. with Todd Bodine holding off David Green. <laughs> that was what Darrell Waltzup was reacting to. But Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins it. And Ralph, some pressure is off that bunch. Oh, it sure is. And Tony Erie Sr. is here with me. Tony, you get your first win of the year. You retake the points lead. Tell me about those restarts. Those seem to be the key. What were you trying to get them to do? Well, we've been hard on our transmission man here the last few weeks. Uh, we had some transmission problems, and uh, he's working real hard uh, to uh, do the best job he can. We had a great transmission in there today. Gordy did a good job, and uh, this one's for Dad. Again, if you're just joining us, we mentioned earlier today that earlier this week, Ralph Urey, Tony's dad, passed away in emotional time. 
We're coming back. Victory Lane is next. That was the best you and I have ever worked together, I think. I enjoyed All right. that. I tell you, Todd Bodine poked that 41 yes, sideways. Yes, sir, he did. I'm <laughs> telling you, that was, and I don't know how that boy saved that car. Best of 99 for the top six. David Green? All the top six, their best finish of the... No. Uh -huh. TNN Motorsports live uh -huh. coverage right, of the MBNA Platinum Second. 200 has been brought to you oh, no, by AC right. Delco oh, Automotive Parts. Kind of <laughs> if you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's see what we got here. Yeah, that ozone just about got that 41 car. <laughs> 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 We never got to talk about Baker being at the Kmart last night. No, no, we didn't. no. He just got the mic and just told everybody I was there buying yeah. underwear. The fans, I, I told him, I said, he's over on aisle five buying him some new underwear. Go over and help him. <laughs> <laughs> CNN Motorsports live coverage of the MBNA Platinum 200 has been brought to you by AC Delco Automotive Parts. If you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. Oh, man, a lot of smiles again in victory lane. Let's go down there. <laughs> and Dale Earnhardt Jr. helped out of his car by Dale Sr. there. Man, what an immensely popular victory. And uh, you guys have been close several times this year. You finally got one, Dale. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you keep working at it and working at it. This bush series is tough, tough medicine, man. These guys uh, have up, stepped up all their programs. It's hard to outrun them nowadays. And then you got all these cup guys coming up there. And uh, I'm going to tell you what, Ward Burton sure had a good car today. Uh, I don't know if we could have held him off much longer. I was trying to drive my car, got a little tight there at the end. We run real hard on restarts. And they should have come on the car like doing good. And, uh, we're kind of in mixed motions here. We, we lost a, a, a relative and a, and a real good friend. Uh, father of Tony Uri, Ralph Uri, and we want to dedicate this one to him. We wanted to get him one in Charlotte, but I had to come in Dover, but this is for him and the whole Uri family. Well, I know that they appreciate that. We talked to Tony about that just a moment ago, Dale. Uh, you took over the points lead. Also, uh, you you uh, gained a lot of valuable points. Matt Kenseth had a lot of trouble today, so you really had made some strides today. Yeah, I hate to see old Matt tear up his race car, man. He's that cool dude, and, uh, you know, surely is a good race car driver, and it's a shame to have to get points that way. I want to do it on the racetrack racing side by side. We sure have a lot of fun doing it, but I figured he'd be up there shortly, but I never saw him, and then I saw his car tore up. That's just a shame for the whole crew. Them guys work hard, and they've really up set their program up. That's one of the better teams this year, and uh, we're just glad to finally make it a big lane run second so many times this year, and here we finally are, man. We're happy. Okay, congratulations again. Have a little fun. Celebrate. He will do that. Dale Earnhardt Jr. gets the win. And for the top six drivers there, their best finishes of 1999. And hearkening back to our discussion before we began racing today, Darrell Waltrip, only two Winston Cup drivers in the top ten today. Well, it's a, it's a tough track. And I don't know. Dover is just one of those kind of racetracks, like I said. Some teams excel, some teams don't. You've got to have the right setup. Great having you along, DW. We'll see you in Michigan. I'll be there, buddy. And, buddy, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, and all the people that love to race today, South Boston next week. I guarantee you it'll be a good one. It is going to be a good one on the short track next week. Again, a big thank you to Buddy Baker and Darrell Waltrip up here topside, while Ralph Shaheen and Glenn Jarrett handled things down in the pits and the garage area. Dale Earnhardt Jr. reassumes the point lead and picks up his eighth career victory in the NASCAR Bush Series.
tomorrow, Bobby Labonte is on the Bud Bowl for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series race, the MBNA Platinum 400. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon. But for now, we're out of here. I'm Eli Gold. Thanks so much for joining us, and our congratulations to the Earnhardt clan back in Victory Lane here at the Monster Mile. We'll see you tomorrow.